Okay, uh, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. So, welcome to the fourth lecture on this uh, machine learning two series of lectures being conducted at IBA Karachi in fall 2021. So, we are having a hybrid session here. Uh, so, today the topic of discussion is uh, cluster analysis. And I say discussion because uh, I'm not the one only who is supposed to speak. If you, if you if you want to learn, you need to ask questions and discuss things, right? So that's why. Okay, uh, cluster analysis uh, is basically a field which all of us know about, uh, having done machine learning one and uh, probably having done some uh, certification courses as well before joining IBA or during IBA. All of you know, okay, cluster analysis is a very famous thing and it's, um, it has lots and lots of uses, but uh, the game inside is quite deep. So we need to understand how to play it, right? So we'll see that today, inshallah, Tara, because um, cluster analysis has basically two uh, usages. So one of them is the uh, used, it is used during the data wrangling uh, phase. And uh, we know that data wrangling, uh, Kyandar, we are trying to understand the data, right? One of the things after cleaning the data and uh, making the data clean from dirty data, because data is typically dirty, whether it is big data or small data. So one of the things we want to do after cleaning the data is to understand the data. Before you can go towards BI or machine learning. So that's something which I myself uh, am very interested in doing. And you should, as part of industries, you should also make that a habit. Uh, I gave a lecture recently to the diploma guys uh, at IBA. So I gave them a strategy to implement data wrangling through data governance. So how to make that part of your mainstream IT operations, not the data analytics operations, because the data analytics people are basically doing BI and machine learning. So they are not that much into wrangling and they are not that much interested in wrangling. So the, it's only the IT guys who can actually implement the data wrangling policies. So I had the idea that the output of data wrangling, one of the outputs is your comprehension of the data through different types of uh, statistical analyses that you already have done in machine learning one. Uh, along with that is also cluster analysis and also regression, okay? So cluster analysis, can there, you get to understand lots and lots of things about the data uh, before you can actually do machine learning or even BI or even data warehousing. That part is missing in our mainstream industries, unfortunately, because uh, there is no policy for cleaning the data or, or understanding the data. The, the policies don't, are not there and people are not interested. Abhi ho kya rai ke, uh, most of the people are just applying uh, directly SQL queries uh, on the database tables. That is happening right now. Okay. Without any cleaning, without any transformations, without any data comprehension, we, are, we have written big, big SQL queries or we are applying them directly uh, onto databases and we are putting the results in reporting servers and we are showing the results. The other thing people are doing is BI wale kya kar rahe hai? BI wale are taking data from the IT and they are doing BI on that data. So there's no significant contribution for cleaning the data because there's no policy. Obviously, uh, the surveys in the last uh, five to 10 years have definitely proved that if your data is dirty, then your analysis is inaccurate. So I believe that mostly analysis companies that is mostly based on their own experience and they are just using BI to understand a few things which they don't understand. So there is no comprehensive lockup between the data and the business requirements. There is no comprehensive, you know, you can say a marriage, you can say, or a comprehensive cohesion between the data or the uh, the business requirements, nothing. 
so the gap is there and you will be able to observe the gap in the industries so the the way to bridge the gap is through data wrangling that is the only way because it have their own requirements they can execute sql they don't need data scientists to run sql it has the expertise to run sql queries and also put them in dashboards on oracle and or on sql server or mysql it's not a problem for the it department okay the problem arises when you want to do analytics to try to answer the business questions not just uh, the regular everyday sql queries that's childish stuff theek hai ek dafa kisi ne mehnat ki wo queries bana li aur wo aapne uska template bana diya aapne unko save kar liya you execute them every day and that's it okay there's nothing new unless you merge with some company or unless you have new customers every one every week or every month there is nothing new to those queries so i have experienced this so that's that's one analysis that you get the other analysis is for the bi or the data warehousing and the third analysis is through time series forecasting and machine learning and the fourth analysis is through big data analytics uh, which is done through data lakes now okay i don't think so ki mai i will be able to teach data lakes but when i teach big data next time so i will definitely be doing data lakes in that course that's very important right now and you can check on linkedin baral what i'm trying to tell you is ke the data wrangling and data comprehension activities in the industries are really uh, they are undermined not prioritized uh, they are not prioritized because there is no policy for that companies mein jis cheez ki policy hai ke it is going to buy this is going to do this is going to for example iba ke andar there is a policy for procurement okay but there is no policy for data governance that's a, that's a new that's a new thing relatively so uh, that is the gap that you guys need to bridge in your own companies <clears throat> that you need to implement the data wrangling module तो अब होगा क्या कि इफ समवन डज बी आई यू नो वेन यू रिक्रूट अ न्यू पर्सन इन द बी आई टीम और दी डेटा साइंटिस्ट डेटा एनालिटिक्स टीम फॉर एग्जाम्पल फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल ही और शी इज गोइंग टू हैव द डेटा डिक्शनरी उसको पता होगा कि किस टेबल का क्या मतलब है कॉलम नेम्स का क्या मतलब है जेजगोन अभी डेटा डिक्शनरी राइट जेज गोन अभी डेटा प्रोफाइलिंग विच इज पार्ट ऑफ डेटा गवर्नेंस और लॉजिकल आई टी ऑपरेशन एंड देन जेज गोन हैव रैंगलिंग uh in a data comprehension document which is going to tell them you know all the basic uh, minute granular details about univariate data or bivariate data that's what wrangling is all about right the basic charts the basic statistical analyses uh in descriptive side and inferential side and along with cluster analysis and regression that's that's all that is so that's quite a lot of stuff so when the bi teams build up on that knowledge then they are going to be doing much much better stuff than what they do currently just look at the data import it transform in power bi and roti pakai hot pot mein rakhi khali sahi hai so that's not how the all the things work you know you, you need to look at what's happening outside so ye 1980s mein we got the guideline from ralph kimball and other data warehousing guys ke data cleaning or data understanding is 60% of your effort they realized this in 1980s and they are following that diligently lehaza wahan pe jo predictive analytics ke failures hain wo bahut kam hai yahan pe to hai hi nahi there's hardly any predictive analytics here in pakistan uh, at least in karachi jo bhi humne survey kiya hai because us uska koi guideline nahi hai uska koi process nahi hai barhal that's the long story um so we need a framework to implement this to give it to the data data team before they can start their own analysis when you aap jab data scientist hote hain the problem you face in the company is ke how to understand the data if some big manager has given you the data you don't want to ping him again and again to start making assumptions so there is no data dictionary and there is no previous analysis because the wrangling has not been done so every data scientist follows his own desires to clean the data to analyze the data to make the predictions his or her own desires right if there is a team yes there is a team but mera experience ye hai ki data science data science ka kaam ek hi banda kar sakta hai tarike se it's just one long script that you have to do why you need two people for that why you are being hired you just report to your manager ke maine ye kaam kiya your manager should be able to understand ki ha ye kaam acha hua ki nahi there is no need for a team 
on a single predictive analytics problem. It's not a software to develop, right? It's, it's just a process that execute and it depends on your experience ki aap kitna acha usko karte hain. So therefore, these are all the problems okay, which are currently facing our industry. So Farah, let's start with cluster analysis. So I hope that this is clear. The purpose of getting a degree from IBA is to uh, motivate you to bring a change. As business managers, you're gonna grow inshallah in your careers. Uh, so bring in data governance, bring in the concept of data lakes and implement a data wrangling and a data comprehension strategy before you start analyzing the data. And then you will see, inshallah, how useful that is. It's mostly based on competition, right? Uh, if uh, J dot is doing it, so A dot will also do it and B dot will also do it. Jitni Kurangi mein jitni bhi industry lines hai, wo sari ki sari karna shuru kar because of the fact that A dot is doing it or C dot is doing it. So that's not how it works. <laughs> you need to understand ke what problem you are facing. Pakistan mein kitni companies hai jo apne customer ka patterns cluster analysis se samajh rahi hai. How many companies are there in Pakistan who are understanding their customer behavior based on uh, cluster analysis, which is the first step, which is in fact the wrangling step. Cluster analysis is an unsupervised learning technique, but it is primarily part of data wrangling. But how many companies are doing it? I mean, telecom companies have millions of customers, so they will rely on some IBM tool, or they will rely on some Oracle tool to do it. Uska, they will pay like millions of rupees per year uh, to, to pay for the license cost. And what's the output? If there is an output, then we should see that on LinkedIn. We should see that on some blog. We should see that on some, on some news channel, right? technology revenue. There's nothing. There is no such interview or no such statement from any big telecom company or a FMCG company. So what's they are doing, they are not doing it. That's what That's what happens in the developed world. America If you do something, you immediately put that on the social network. So what's the there are so many people in Pakistan where is the change? Where's the change? There's no change. So that's why you you guys need to, to do this stuff. I'm not part of that uh, process. Otherwise, I would do it. So I'm not comfortable working a mess. As a position, mein gaya hon, I can't do it. But if you dedicate karke kaam kiya jai, to bhot kuch ho sakta hai. So, yeah. so you need to keep this in mind. Barhal, cluster analysis. Um, so cluster means to group uh, things together which are similar to each other. right? So uh, in this case, as we have training data, so we are talking about the rows or instances. We are not talking about like clustering uh, okay, females ka cluster, agya, males ka cluster, not things like that, but we're talking about clustering the rows of the training data or the data that you have. Okay. So uh, the, uh, yeah, the, the rows consist of columns. Rows are made up of columns, right? So every row in a database could represent an atomic entity like a sale or a transaction, whatever. Okay. Ab, uh, what we need to do is to, um, to define a metric for similarity. How to define similarity between two rows. Uh, if this is one row of the data, and this is one row of the data, how can I find the distance between the rows? And obviously, uh, rows are defined over columns, right? So I might be having 10 or 15 columns. So, so this is row one, and this is row two. So how do I find the distance between? So we need to define that distance. So a lot of work has been done in the last uh, 30, 40 years. So we'll see the distance measures. And the distance measures are different for different types of applications. So clustering is the process of putting a group of one or more rows. A group, one or more rows. So I can also have one row in one cluster. Uh, what would that mean? An outlier or noise? That is quite possible, right? Yeah. Now, outlier kaise detect karte we typically do that using box plot analysis and skew plots, right? To detect the outliers. But this is one other way of detecting the outlier by clustering the rules. And this way is more robust than that because 
there you are detecting the outlier in just one column. A column may outlier kahan par hai? Here I'm detecting the outliers with respect to the whole row. So that's like with respect to the customer data, okay, which are my customers are outliers. So this is much more robust uh, method than the box plot analysis, which is just a univariate analysis. This is a multivariate analysis. For okay, so similarity is determined by a distance measure. Is this thing clear? It's a pretty simple concept to understand. And uh, how many clusters should I make for my customer data if I have the customer data? How to determine that? Just make a random guess. When you when uh, ask such a question, tell the minimum and the maximum. What should be the minimum number of clusters? Two. Maximum? Wrong. Minimum number of clusters is? One. It is possible that all the, all the people that I have right now, I've just started a new business, or jitne bhi customer are they are more or less similar to each other. Maybe all our males or all our females or all our students. So they had displaying a very similar pattern. All those can there say I can use the I can force I can force I don't care students say, but I want them broken. So you can do it. It's up to you in one of the algorithms. But uh, it is possible to have minimum one plus right? Uh, and the maximum. Would you like that? So, what did you maximum possible. Mein, you, are, you, are, you are right. That's the right answer. But logically speaking, how many would you want? No, that does not depend on. Let, okay, let me say okay, you have data for 30,000 customers. You have 30,000 customers of, in e-commerce. Now, tell me how many clusters you want to make. How much work do you how many can this understand? 10? Huh? Maximum five. If it was in my power to specify the number of clusters, I would say maximum five. I will not be able to understand more than that. I can't keep track of that, right? Four to five clusters is enough. 10 is too much. 10 is too much. Or if you have 10, you would be like forcing to if there are no 10 patterns, like five seems a reasonable thing to have. Or this is the typical uh, papers, customer data because you need to put that on the dashboard. You can't display 10 different behaviors to managers. It is, they can't really keep track of things. How can I keep track of 10 different trains running on the same line? It's not possible, right? main patterns So K-means algorithm, mein, I have the power. I specify kar sakta hon, ke just make four groups and it will do it. If there's an outlier group, so it will say ke, yaar, ye teen, char hai, ye group. Hai. If I have, let's say, 1,000 rows, so I have 250, 250, 250, 250 something like that. So when I have five clusters, the 50, hai, that is like more of an outlier sort of situation for this. 1,000 rows. You get very to understanding. Hogi. So it's all trial and error. You have to understand, you know, and it depends on the sample. Jo ke aap mein liya hai. Sample, agar, if the sample is weak, then your clustering and analysis, everything will be weak. G. Yeah. Uh, overfitting a concept is more in model learning. Uh, here we are not actually learning a model. We are just grouping things together through some, uh, basically through partitioning methods and through density-based methods. These two main methods are used. So it's a pretty simple approach to understand in all the algorithms. It's not very difficult to understand. So we can't actually say that we are fitting a model like machine learning. Mein we, are, we have a hypothesis that this model is going to fit on the data. So I'm learning the probability distribution of the data. It, concept Although when you do the mixture modeling, we'll see what is hard clustering and soft clustering. There might be one type of clustering just in the modeling. So, but typically, I don't think so. There's a concept of overfitting in this. 
Walaikum Assalam. So while doing cluster, we first partition the instances into groups or clusters based on data similarity and then assign the label. So you can assign the label yourself, C1, C2, C3. Uh, it depends what you can see. If you have to check clustering in algorithm, ko. so the, the best approach is that you generate a data set, classification data set, which has two labels, binary labels. Just generate a classification data set, uh, random numbers, ka, hai? where they have two labels, and then give it to the clustering algorithm. And then see that the clustering algorithm is class label ke se groups ko cluster kar ki nahi kar Do you understand what I'm saying? So let's say ke I have this data. So uh, these rows are all class one. It's a classification data. Hai? And these rows are all class two because this is the business knowledge that we have given. Now, if I give this training data to the clustering algorithm, what would I expect? Cluster all these rows into not C1, into one cluster. C1 is what we know. Cluster ke algorithm ko nahi pata na ke C1 kya cheez hai. C1 to usko hum bhi nahi. We are just going and cluster all these rows into the other cluster. And I can specify ke do clusters banane aapne. I can specify that. But uh, that is not how it will work. Obviously, there will be overlap. Kuch cheeze niche ki upar chali jayengi, upar ki niche aa jayengi. So that will help you evaluate ki cluster algorithm mera kitna acha kaam kar hai. It's just a benchmark thing. Otherwise, your customer data aapke paas hoga, maybe it is not going to have any labels. Binary or tertiary, whatever. So you just have to, you know, proceed as the algorithm uh, will allow you to proceed. This is just for benchmarking your clustering algorithm. That's it. Achha, uh, advantage of clustering over classification. Now that's that's a very, very heavy statement. That person is probably going to get an A grade in the course. The advantage of clustering over classification is that. What does this mean? What do you mean by thinking clustering over classification? You have training data. It is not labeled. And you, you know there is a significant relationship between several rows. You have millions of rows, for example. You, are, you want to label it, but you don't have the time to label hundred thousands of rows, right? How will you do that? You don't have the time or to, to have any software jo ke sabko label kar de jake. What will you do? Hey? Clustering kar denge. That's it. The clustering algorithm is going to help you tell ke Kin rows ko ek label milna chahiye, kin ko dusra milna chahiye, kin ko dusra. Ab wo label kya hoga wo, that is up to the business. But what I'm saying is ke if you don't have the time or the business knowledge to develop the classification problem, then clustering can help you develop your labels. Especially with respect to customers. If you want to develop labels for your customer behavior now, that's, that's the main application. Yes, you can say that. It's basically, it's, it's, it happens at the data wrangling level. That's why I told you, that wrangling is if you are going towards the machine learning side later on, and you got like maybe 100,000 customers, you have no inkling of how to classify them. You want to develop groups like, I have some golden customers, I have some platinum customers, and I have some, let's say, silver customers. It's quite possible. This is every company's problem. Hai. So, you don't know if gold kisko dalu, silver kisko dalu, or platinum kisko dalu. You have no idea, right? Because the customer might be having 35 attributes. You will say that this is the sales that you have But you can say that sales seasonal. Aapko deta ho. Maybe he, does not, he or she does not give you regular sales. So, the clustering algorithm is going to help you discover those clusters of customers who can be grouped together based on all the attributes, not just one or two. So when you are at the managerial level, you are thinking of maximum three to four attributes. Yaar uski age dekh lo, yaar uska gender dekh lo. 
उसकी रिसेंसी देख लो उसकी सेल्स देख लो बट आई आई पर्सनली डू नॉट थिंक ये द डेटा साइंटिस्ट विल बी एबल टू डेवलप अ फॉर्मूला to label the customers or develop a label for the customer based on these four attributes i perceive to think you get that you need to develop a mathematical relationship you need to develop a mathematical formula for this before you can start to label uh, it's not easy right hamari basic maths bahut kamzor hai it's easy to apply scikit learn but it's not easy to develop mathematical formulas for data scientists i'm sure about it ये अभी हम रिसर्च में कर रहे हैं ना ये काम सो मुझे मुसीबत पड़ी हुई है तो दूसरों को मैं क्या कह सकता हूँ सो यू डेवलप अर इक्वेजन टू 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 अचीव सम ऑब्जेक्टिव यू डेवलप एन इक्वेजन टू मिनिमाइज सम कॉस्ट इट टेक्स अ लॉट ऑफ टाइम आई डोंट थिंक सो के डेटा साइंटिस्ट विल बी एबल टू डू दैट क्विकली सो देर फॉर यू लीव इट टू द क्लस्टिंग एलगोर्थम विच इज गोइंग टू टेक केयर ऑफ ऑल द एट्रीब्यूट वाइल ग्रुपिंग द रोज समझ आ गई बात की सो द मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट एप्लीकेशन ऑफ क्लस्टरिंग इज एक्जैक्टली दिस Uh, to you want to understand your customer, know your customer, and that is exactly what is not happening. Abi hota ye ke you got different business heads in the company, right? Koi procurement ka head hai, koi CRM ka head hai, koi ERP ka head hai, koi operations ka head hai. All of them have their own desires regarding the data, right? So all of them are running their own individual SQL queries or BI charts and and doing the analysis. so when you develop labels for your customers so everyone is going to use that that should be part of the erp but i can guarantee that that is not there the cluster analysis is the only way that you can understand your customers and i can guarantee ke ye nahi ho raha kyunki cluster analysis is a mushkil kaam hai i mean aapko assignment dunga na fir aapko maza aayega wo kaam karne mein then you will see ke how difficult that is like machine learning there is no hard and fast answer sahi hai and there are like maybe 10 different algorithms jo ke is waqt market mein chal rahe hain at least uh you need to you need to specify the problem exactly typically when you are able to specify the label then you go towards classification this clustering is unsupervised learning technique that means when you don't have the labels so you you do you, you do the ul thing to create the labels and you want to create your labels first of all for your customers your customer data may you need to develop one unique table which is obviously going to be take Take data from different tables, right? Customer का एक आप table बनाएंगे जिसके अंदर sales or orders, everything is going to be there, and you give that to the clustering algorithm. You got to try out different, at least five to ten different algorithms, and see which things seems more balanced for you, because you have the business knowledge. ठीक है? Business knowledge का बंदा जब वो cluster के results देखेगा तो he is the person who is going to understand it the best, not the data scientist. मैं आपको गारंटी से बात कह सकता हूँ यू कॉन्ट डू इट विदाउट द बिजनेस बिकॉज दे गॉट एक्सपीरियंस ऑफ द कस्टमर्स जो कंपनी का हेड होगा ही हैज नॉलेज ऑफ मार्केटिंग ही हैज नॉलेज ऑफ कस्टमर सर्विस ही हैज नॉलेज ऑफ ऑपरेशन एंड सेल्स ओनली ही कैन टेल यू के विच क्लस्टिंग इज द बेस्ट सॉरी हाँ how much the cluster is ah uh, that's what i told you in the beginning ke dekhen if you have the labels then you can cross check your clustering performance based on those labels that's just for cross checking your clustering result but primarily cluster analysis is an unsupervised learning technique when you don't have the labels and in the case of customers definitely you will not have the labels if you have the labels then uh, they might be based on the business knowledge or on a limited scale agar aap clustering algorithm ko if you give it the customer data 100% sure baat hai ki that grouping is going to be better than what you already have 
या या बेटर होगी लाजमी बेहतर इट विल इट माइट टेक सम टाइम फॉर योर क्लस्टिंग टू कन्वर्ट बिकॉज यू विल शो इट टू द बिजनेस दे विल डू समथिंग बेस्ड ऑन दैट एंड देर गोन टेस्ट इट देर विल बी एरर्स देर माइट बी एरर्स then they are going to come back to you you are going to revise it so it might iterate two or three times before your clustering converges ye nahi hai ki ek dafa aap kar lenge to ho jayega machine learning mein bhi yahi hota hai theek hai to jab live testing mein performance goes down then you get back to the data science team and no no they revise the machine learning approach and do something better cut some columns etc etc and then they get back so uh, adaptable to changes clustering is much easier than classification but clustering is done for classification as we have discussed help single out useful features that distinguish different groups so basically we are looking at all the features um is pe requirement ki hoti hai ki when you cluster a data then all the columns obviously need to be numerical typically machine learning mein bhi yahi hota hai na machine learning does not take string data right so i convert that to boolean so in this case as well i have to convert it to numerical although i can also find differences between string values i have some uh, distance measures which can tell you the difference between string values so even string values can be there so it will tell you the distance between the two rows so for example this column can be string this column can be numerical uh, this column can be string again so and numerical i think it, if you have the time stamp i can find out the distance between time stamp as well but i i don't know whether we have uh, whether that's part of the norm so the data scientist may need to probably select the columns jiske base pe clustering karni hogi maybe the time stamp is not important i can find out the difference between two two time stamps right Why feature new? नहीं अगर मैं दो टाइम स्टेम से मैं नया फीचर क्या बनाऊंगा I can just subtract the time stamp and that's the distance. हाँ ठीक है ठीक है आई कैन यूज आई कैन यूज द टाइम स्टेम टू क्रिएट न्यू वेरिएबल्स ऑफ माई इंटरेस्ट जिसमें वो टाइम रिफ्लेक्ट हो रहा हो दैट्स द थिंग तो बट आई मीन ये तो डेटा देख के समझ में आएगी आई थिंक आई कैन ऑल्सो सब्जेक्ट द टाइम स्टेम एज इट इज टू गेट कि कितना डिस्टेंस है आई थिंक दैट इज द डिस्टेंस दैट इज द डिस्टेंस राइट अच्छा इसमें एक रिक्वायरमेंट ये होती है कि यू नीड टू नॉर्मलाइज द डेटा स्टैंडर्डाइज ऑल द नोमेरिकल डेटा विद द जी डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन so that everything comes between 0 and 1 yaad hai jo standardization padi thi how do you standardize that x minus mu over standard deviation so that's going to bring it between 0 and 1 the standard normal distribution otherwise whatever's going to happen is ke ek column can overwhelm the other column agar uh, is column ki value millions mein hai aur iski value tens mein hai then there is no concept in you know definitely the cluster distance is going to be affected by this column the most so all the values need to be on the same scale so you need to scale the data numerical data ki baat karo you need to scale all the numerical data according to the z z score or some other normalization jo bhi aap karna chahe before you can do the clustering so yaad rakhiyega theek hai dekhen categorical data is a thorn is like a thorn theek hai wo bi ke bachcho wale kaam ke liye hai machine learning aur iske liye categorical data we have to do away with it so it's best to develop a strategy to uh, convert it to numerical data so dummy or one hot encoding jo kar dete hain that's one way to convert it typically mere khayal mein zyada wohi istemal hoti hai so we have the label encoding and we have the one hot encoding yahi humne padhi thi na ml1 mein so that's the way or you can 
आप यू कैन ऑल्सो डिवेलप द रैंकिंग योर सेल्फ वन टू थ्री फोर ऑर्डिनल अगर है इफ दे ताकि आप कर इफ यू कैन डिवेलप सच अ थिंग के ओल्ड टीन एजर यंग एडल्ट ओल्ड सो जीरो वन टू थ्री फोर इफ देर इज अ लॉजिकल नंबर वन हॉट इन कोडिंग इज द आंसर डू द वन हॉट इन कोडिंग कन्वर्टेड या बेहतर तो ये है कि आप कॉलम ही डिलीट कर दें वाई इज दैट आप बता सकते हैं मुझे वाई इज दैट आप लोग हंसते हैं फिफ्टी परसेंट हंसना बनता था फिफ्टी परसेंट नहीं बनता था दैट्स नॉट अ रॉन्ग अप्रोच वैसे इन सम सिचुएशन बिकॉज द स्ट्रिंग डेटा इज देर टू एक्सप्लेन द नोमरिकल डेटा कस्टमर का नाम है प्रोडक्ट का नाम है अब प्रोडक्ट के नाम में मैं डिफरेंस क्या निकालूंगा दस नॉट मेक सेंस राइट इफ आई कॉलम ऑफ प्रोडक्ट नेम्स हैप्पी काउ चीज एंड नीचे ब्लू ब्रांड मार्जरीन इन द नेक्स्ट रो वट यू मीन बाय ब्लू ब्रांड ब्लू ब्रांड ब्लू ब्रांड मार्जरीन माइनस हैप्पी काउ चीज दस नॉट मीन एनी थिंग वन हॉट एंड कोटिंग में ले जाए इवन देन वट डज इट मीन डज नॉट Really add up for me. Although distance to nikleega, ke distance ye nikleega, it's not the same product, right? Distance ye nikleega, it's not the same product. So, ठीक है, if that if that works, that works. But uh, you should make some innovative methods to just ignore the column which can be ignored in clustering, because you know the main data is the numerical data. Categorical data is there to explain or make the dimensions to understand the numerical data. सही है तो ये नहीं कि आप सारे स्ट्रिंग कॉलम डिलीट करना शुरू कर दें प्रोडक्ट नेम्स कुड बी इम्पोर्टेंट प्रोडक्ट नेम्स आर नॉट इम्पोर्टेंट प्रोडक्ट कैटेगरीज आर इम्पोर्टेंट तो प्रॉब्लम आई विल नॉट डिलीट द प्रोडक्ट कैटेगरीज ठीक है ये सारा आएगा आपकी साइन में फिक्र ना करें आप अच्छा एप्लीकेशन मार्केट रिसर्च पैटर्न रिकग्निशन इमेज प्रोसेसिंग में एक्सट्रीमली इम्पोर्टेंट इन डीप लर्निंग डीप लर्निंग के अंदर भी इमेज प्रोसेसिंग में to find out the different areas of an image which are of interest to you and give those areas to the deep learning algorithm you can uh, cluster the image data just very important application help the marketers discover distinct groups in their customer base that we already seen okay biology derive the plant and animal taxonomies categorize the genes aajkal is pe betahasha kaam ho raha hai gene analysis तो so, इसके लिए तो दे हैव डेवलप्ड देयर ओन डिस्टेंस मेजर्स जीन एनालिसिस के लिए ओके स्पेशल एनालिसिस एक्सट्रीमली इंपॉर्टेंट आइडेंटिफिकेशन ऑफ एरियाज ऑफ सिमिलर लैंड यूज इन एन अर्थ ऑब्जर्वेशन डेटाबेस तो जियोलॉजिकल डेटा है यू कैन ग्रुप एनी एरिया टुगेदर बेस्ड ऑन इलेक्ट्रिसिटी यूजेज वाटर यूजेज ट्रांसपोर्ट व्हाटएवर ठीक है आइडेंटिफिकेशन ऑफ ग्रुप्स ऑफ हाउसेस सिमिलर हाउसेस टुगेदर सिमिलर सोसाइटीज व्हिच आर फॉलोइंग सम Uh, you know they are similar to each other so you can group them on a map iska ek maine online ek wo bhi dekha tha blog mein bhi kuch isme aaya hua tha application text analytics mein jo log interested hain nlp mein so this is a very huge application of clustering the documents ye this is one of the basic applications hamare yahan dr sajad is domain mein kaam kar rahe hain so it's been i mean cluster analysis is one of the basic things for clustering understanding the documents now this is very important outlier detection so everything gets grouped into into three clusters and just a few things go into the fourth cluster so that's noise and outlier detection and again data wrangling which we have already talked about in lot of detail okay the requirement is clustering uh we need scalable algorithms so clustering algorithms are scalable ठीक है कि डेटा जितना भी ज्यादा हो क्लस्टरिंग आपको परफॉर्म करने की बिग डेटा में भी परफॉर्म कर सकती है ऑल बिग डेटा एनालिटिक्स हैज नॉट रियली यू नो इट्स बीइंग ओवरकम बाय डीप लर्निंग बिग डेटा एनालिटिक्स में ये हुआ है कि मॉन्गो डीबी एंड दीज थिंग्स एंड हडूप एंड डेटा लेक्स है बट एक्चुअली क्लस्टरिंग बिग डेटा इज नॉट वेरी कॉमन बिकॉज इट्स स्पार्क वगैरह के ऊपर आप कर सकते हैं स्पार्क इज आई थिंक इज द मोस्ट useful application for big data analytics if you do spark the spark ke upar clustering algorithms i think implement hai ml lib ke andar so you can try this out lekin unki applications bahut zyada nazar nahi aati it's very difficult thing to do you need uh, to deal with different kinds of attributes clustering can do that 
you need to discern clusters of different shapes. So when you use the partitioning based methods of clustering, like k-means, so it will always discover clusters which are spherical shapes. Ke but maybe your data does not, I mean, your data definitely might not follow these spherical shapes. Okay, so huh, when you plot it, if you plot it in 2D, so the partitioning, the way the partitioning works is it develops clusters of circular clusters or spherical or oval shaped clusters. Okay? But uh, I mean, these might not be applicable. So you then go towards density based methods. Okay, so the other dense regions and they will be clustered together. Uh, you need uh, you need to you, you need the algorithms. Okay, we can work with thirty-five to forty attributes, and clustering can do that. Okay, clustering can also deal with noisy data, and it is also easy to interpret the clusters. Not very difficult. Okay. So this is an application. So if you are the head of a retail store and you want to understand your consumers. You cannot look at the details of each customer separately. So you can say, okay, let us group our customers into 10 groups. I will say five groups, okay? And use a separate strategy um, in each of these 10 groups. Okay, sorry, no man, that should be here. So there are, this is two, scenario I told you before. Hard clustering means that every uh, row, gets clustered into one cluster. Every row gets clustered into one cluster. There's no row which will not get clustered, so, and it will only just go into one cluster. Soft clustering means that you assign a probability, a likelihood. Okay, there is a 60% chance that this belongs to cluster two, and a 40% chance that it belongs to cluster one. So that's what happens in a mixture model. Gaussian mixture model, mein, that's what happens. Okay, the clusters are overlapping, and that is much more flexible than hard clustering. Uh, G, threshold laga sakte Bilkul. It depends ki wo aap mixture modeling kis tarah kar rahe hain. Mixture modeling to khair, next class mein zara thoda subsidy dekhenge usko kyunki it's uh, I think very important approach for clustering. Uh, aaj hume basic level bol sakte hain, but uh, these two methods are there. Theek hai. So now let's go through the distance functions very, very quickly. So um, this is called the Minkowski distance to find out the distance between two rows. So Minkowski is uh, xi minus yi to the uh, norm to the power p summation over all the uh, columns to the power one over p. That's called the Minkowski distance. Okay. Um, P ke different values ke liye you get different distance functions. Okay. So I mean it's just a variable. We'll see if we have some in the okay. So Minkowski is a metric in the normed vector. What is the norm of a vector? Hmm. Vector ka norm kya so let's say I have this one row. One row is one vector, right? So I have this, let's say, four columns. What is the norm of this vector? I have four numerical values. Magnitude. Nee, just one word. Norm ka matlab kya hai? Shukar hai, maine video on ni kiwi, vanna sab ko pata ra jayega. Norm means the length. The length of the vector. Magnitude bhi kya sakte hai, length is a better word. How many types of norms are there? L1, L2, L3, L4. L1, L2 is the answer. Okay, so there are two types of norms. L1 norm, maybe L3 bhi aage ho, mujhe nahi pata kisi research paper mein hoga. So L1 norm mein kya hota hai? So let's say I have this vector 1, 2, 3. First L1 norm. Please cross check this. I, have, I think one plus two plus three. And that's called the L1 norm. And what is the L2 norm? One square plus two square plus three square and under root. 
तो यही है ना तो इट्स जस्ट अ मेथड ऑफ फाइंडिंग आउट के मैग्नीट्यूड कितना है या लेंथ कितनी है वेक्टर की दैट्स दैट्स कॉल्ड द नॉर्म ठीक है सो सपोज x इज अ इज अ वेक्टर स्पेस देन अ नॉर्म ऑन x तो नॉर्म इज रिटन लाइक दिस ये हमने नोटेशन देखी भी है दैट्स कॉल्ड द नॉर्म वेक्टर व्हिच सेटिस्फाइज द बिलो कंडीशन जीरो वेक्टर इफ देयर इज नो एलिमेंट्स देन ऑब्वियसली नॉर्म इज गोइंग टू बी जीरो नाउ दिस वाज द क्वेश्चन जो कि हमने डीप लर्निंग में शायद पूछा था कि if you multiply the weights and biases by a constant then it is not going to make a difference to the final output so this is the answer the direction of the vector does not change when you multiply it with a positive number though its length will be changed so scaling to ho jayegi but the direction or the jo jo main output hai that is not going to change the result is not going to change scaling will be there but the result is not going to change so kyunki hum perceptron ki baat kar rahe the to greater than 0 to if you multiply by constant to still it will be greater than 0 positive ko multiply kiya to abhi yahan se 3 aa raha hai so agar 15 aa jayega but the output is not going to change okay and it's it satisfies the triangle inequality what is that the calculated distance between two points is two vectors is always going to be a straight line so that satisfies the triangle inequality बस ये मतलब बेसिक चीज आप याद रखें कि नॉर्म क्या होता है जस्ट रिमेम्बर दिस ओके सो दीज आर द प्रॉपर्टीज विच विल कीप द नॉर्म नॉर्म इंड्यूस्ड मैट्रिक एनी मैट्रिक व्हिच इज बेस्ड ऑन दिस मिनकोस्की डिस्टेंस दैट विल बी होमोजेनियस एंड ट्रांसलेशन इनवेरिएंट आई कैन मूव द पोजीशन ऑफ द वेक्टर्स बट द ओवरऑल रिजल्ट शुड नॉट चेंज द आई कैन ट्रांसलेट द वेक्टर फ्रॉम दिस पॉइंट टू दिस पॉइंट लेकिन डिस्टेंस वही रहना चाहिए सो दीज आर द कंडीशन विच विल हेल्प यू रहना क्योंकि यहां पर हो ही रहा है कि आई एम फाइंडिंग द नॉर्म जब मैं दो रोज का डिस्टेंस निकाल रहा हूं आपस में तो आई एम वर्किंग विद नॉर्म्स सो नॉर्म ऑफ दिस वैक्टर एंड नॉर्म ऑफ दिस वैक्टर बेस्ड ऑन दीज टू नॉर्म्स आई एम वर्किंग टू फाइंड आउट द डिस्टेंस सो देर फोर आई हैव टू टेक केयर ऑफ दीज ठीक है लेकिन आप लोगों के लिए जस्ट आप अपना नॉलेज उस पर रखें या तो मिनकाउस की so it's a generalized metric uh we can manipulate our formula to calculate distance between two data points different ways so when the value of p is 1 it is called the manhattan distance so here the p ko 1 kar dein to manhattan ban jayega this so let's say okay, in one row i have the values 1 2 3 and the other i have values 3 4 5 so what is the manhattan distance okay let's say this is 6 जी, आई स्टार्ट विथ थ्री माइनस वन प्लस फोर माइनस टू प्लस फाइव माइनस सिक्स तो दिस इज द नॉर्म सो आई हैव टू टेक दैट एज अ पॉजिटिव वैल्यू सो टू प्लस टू प्लस वन फाइव इज आंसर ठीक है यूक्लिडियन में आई इक्वेट पी इक्वल्स टू टू यूक्लिडियन का क्या फायदा होता है डीप लर्निंग जो पढ़े उनको मैंने बताया था क्वाड्रेटिक कॉस्ट फंक्शन चलिए वी कॉन्ट अप्लाई जस्ट ये कॉन्सेप्ट हेयर इज जस्ट अ मोर रोबस्ट मेजर ऑफ डिस्टेंस एज कंपेयर टू द मैन हेटन वन मैन हेटन जो है वो भी देख रहे अच्छा इफ पी इज इन्फिनिटी देन इट इज कॉल्ड द चेबी शेव प्रॉब्ली रशियन गाय चेबी शेव का नाम सुना होगा मैथमेटिक्स कोर्सेज में राइट चेबी शेव डिस्टेंस तो पी इज आई डोंट नो के I really have no idea how when that is applied, but if you if you get the idea, then you can do that. Okay. So, uh, Manhattan is very simple. Manhattan works on a grid, like in a grid-like path. So, Manhattan may have to follow a grid-like path to calculate the distance. Euclidean, this is like Manhattan. So, x and y, the distance uh, will always follow a grid. Euclidean, I can go directly to find the distance on the straight line. Cosine distance. this is what used in text analytics one document how much it is similar or dissimilar to the other, other document so cosine goes so one document is one vector we put that as a vector right kya kehte hain usko wo bag of words yahi hota hai na bag of words nahi wo jo what you call that vector jo ki document ko pura vector mein dal dete hain sorry count vector 
वेक्टराइजर हाँ वेक्टराइजर ठीक है सही है तो दिस इज वन डॉक्यूमेंट ए दिस इज अदर डॉक्यूमेंट बी एंड दिस इज दिन सिमिलरिटी मेजर तो नॉर्म ऑफ ए मल्टीप्लाइड बाई नॉर्म ऑफ बी इन टू कॉस ऑफ थीटा वेर थीटा इज द डिस्टेंस बिटवीन दी हाँ डिस्टेंस डिस्टेंस कॉस थीटा इज बट आई एम इंटरेस्टेड इन and that is found by this dot product over norm multiplied by norm dot product to pata hai na kis tarah nikalte hain okay norm is individual to each vector so this is what finds the between documents so we measure the degree of angle between two documents the term frequencies in different document let us matrix then used when the magnitude of the vectors does not matter but the orientation so the angle is going to tell you ke how much the documents are different from each other okay so that's pretty simple हाँ तो कोसाइन का जरा बताएं कि इफ यू सी दिस कॉस ऑफ जीरो इज वन कॉस ऑफ नाइनटी जीरो कॉस ऑफ वन एट इज माइनस वन हाउ इज दैट गोइंग टू हेल्प इफ कॉस थी टाइकल्स टू वन वट इज दैट मीन जीरो एंगल है दैट मीन्स दर ऑलमोस्ट द सेम एंड इफ इट इज जीरो नहीं परपेंडिकुलर एक दूसरे से परपेंड डॉक्यूमेंट परपेंडिकुलर होने का क्या मतलब होगा सम वर्ड डिफरेंट फ्रॉम इच अदर एंड इफ इट इज माइनस वन कंप्लीटली ऑपोजिट राइट सो दो अंडरस्टैंड दिस बेटर अदरवाइज आई माइट बी वेड फन ऑफ ठीक है या सो ऑर्थोगोनल वैक्टर्स आर देर आई कैन यूज द टर्म ऑर्थोगोनल एट जीरो विच इज नाइनटी डिग्रीज एंड देर इज ऑपोजिट डायरेक्शन ठीक है Mahala no bis. Don't start thinking about Malala. Okay. Mahala no bis distance. It's a big uh, conspiracy probably for us. Mahala no bis distance is used for calculating the distance between two data points in a multivariate space. This is a, a little bit complicated. Um, two data points. What does that mean? So this is one row and this is the other row. in a multivariate space so that's what we're working with is a measure distance between a point p and distribution d acha okay so we have a distribution of data let's assume that this is normal and i have a point p and i want to find out ke how much this point p is deviating from the distribution uh it takes the covariance in account what is covariance we did that in the last class right yes it bilkul sahi it it gives you a measure of how much one parameter the change in one parameter is impacting the change in the other ab namaz ka break le lete hain thodi der mein um the distance between an observation and the mean the observation is this aur ye mean kya hai what is the mean the mean of the current distribution so actually this is a this is a different class of distance mahala nobis and there are other as well like for example the kl divergence you probably have not heard the word the kl divergence measures the distance between two probability densities ek normal curve hai ek dusra normal curve it measures ki how much they are close or far from each other are you acha theek hai so now who is going to explain to me this equation this is not like a distance between two rows this is the distance between a distribution d and a point p so i cannot use this to compare two rows together what do you think how is this measuring it what is mu hari ma bataiye of what of the probability density ठीक है ऑफ द दिस इज प्रॉब्लली अ कंटीन्यूअस पॉलर डेंसिटी तो मैं डेंसिटी का वर्ड यूज कर रहा हूं बिकॉज़ द द डेंसिटी इज डिफाइंड बाय इट्स मीन एंड स्टैंडर्ड डेविएशन इन मोस्ट केसेस ठीक है x इज व्हाट द डेटा पॉइंट जिसका आप डेविएशन मेजर कर लें एंड व्हाट इज s द कोवेरियंस मैट्रिक्स द इनवर्स कोवेरियंस मैट्रिक्स सो इट इज मेजरिंग द कोवेरियंस कोवेरियंस किस चीज की होगी Does the probability density have covariance? No, no, no. This is the covariance matrix. I have written here. I have written here. Yes. 
हाँ, एयर एयर एस इज दिन सो वट इज दिस इक्वेशन टेलिंग मी I have this uh, density m, uh, and I have this point, and I'm measuring how much x is far away from the mean, multiplied by the covariance matrix, multiplied by the same thing. Ah, okay, so that's the transpose there. Thanks. Uh, so what will that mean? I have one, two, three. No, no, no. This square is not happening. This I am multiplying the uh, okay uh, yeah so let's say this is the difference this is the difference between the uh, yeah so this is x minus mu so this is transpose i put that in the column and i put that in the row again which is the normal way uh, so 1 into 1 plus 2 into 2 plus 3 into 3 that is the dot product and i multiply that by the लेकिन हम ये समझना चाह रहे हैं कि वाई वी आर मल्टीप्लाइंग दैट बाई दी कोवेरियंस मैट्रिक सर कोवेरियंस उसको नॉर्मलाइज कर देगा एंड दिस कोवेरियंस इज इज व्हाट कोवेरियंस इज टिपिकली फाउंड बिटवीन व्हाट टू टू कॉलम्स राइट नहीं सर ओके ये 3 okay. बाय 3 का मैट्रिक्स होगा वेरियंस कोवेरियंस का हां सो या सी ठीक है 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 this is actually the covariance metric i if you have done the equation uh, sorry assignment 2 you must be having a knowledge of the covariance metric assignment 2 kiya aap logon ne 3 3 wo jo playground banana hai aaj bhi playground milega aapko ek to kya ho to deadline aage kar denge early iske baad kar denge koi problem nahi hai playground to aaj mil jayega aapko मैं प्लेग्राउंड इसलिए कहता ताकि आप उसको जस्ट कीप ऑन प्लेइंग एंड यू नो यू फील एक्साइटेड टू वर्क इन इट इफ आई से वर्क ग्राउंड इफ आई से वर्क ग्राउंड देन यू विल नॉट बी हां डेडलाइन विल टेक इट इन अक्टूबर डोंट वरी ठीक है सो कोवेरियंस मैट्रिक्स इफ आई एम टेकिंग थ्री थिंग्स हियर x minus mu दैट मींस आई हैव आई एम टॉकिंग अबाउट अ थ्री डायमेंशनल सिनेरियो राइट i have three columns so if i find out my 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 training data is over three columns so agar main uska covariance matrix banaun to that is all column with each other to pura matrix ban jayega sahi hai nahi samajh mein aayi aapko baat clear hai hum so like column 1 column 2 column 3 column 1 column 2 column 3 what is the covariance between 1 and 1 is probably zero diagonal mein zero honge and this value is going to be same as this one this value is going to be same as this one this value is going to be same as this one is just all the columns covariance in the same matrix so now the question is ke mujhe ye pata chal gaya s s is telling me ke how are the different uh, columns related to each other how they are varying with respect to each other how is this helping me find out the distance between a density and this point p or point x लॉजिकल रीजन पता है ना कि आई एम फाइंडिंग आउट द डिस्टेंस बिटवीन दिस वाई आई एम इंक्लूडिंग दी को वेरियंस इन द डिस्टेंस एक तो ये लॉजिकल बात समझ में आती है टू फाइंड आउट वेदर दिस पॉइंट इज क्लोज टू एनी वन ऑफ द कॉलम्स के बिकॉज आई एम ट्राइंग टू पुश दिस पॉइंट के तुम डू यू बिलोंग टू दिस डेंसिटी और नॉट so it belongs to this density then it has to follow one or more of the correlation values which i already have in s samajh aa rahi na baat ki 
so that that seems to be the the only logical reason for this baki x minus mu transpose and x minus mu uh, we just need one term basically but we have included the transpose as well so that we can have one scalar output at the end samajh aari baat ki humne us usi distance measure ko transpose karke bhi dal diya so that we can have one scalar output at the end so if i multiply this by this and by a 3 into 3 matrix i am going to get one scalar output at the end or square square ko square root le lunga that is going to be tell me that so please remember ke this is a separate class of distance that you will need to understand balki uh, we have the kl divergence which is the most famous one we have the jason shannon divergence which also tells the same thing and we have this mahala nobis distance theek hai and there are also three or four other approaches which which tell you whether a point belongs to a density or not that's very important in fact in uh, outline analysis maybe this will be very important sahi hai up if you if you know the distribution of your data the the joint distribution of your data and you have a one row which comes in you can find out the distance between a joint distribution and this new row to find out whether ki ye aaya ki mere train data ka sahi measure de bhi raha hai ki ya it's like of an outlier so before you make that row as part of the training data for machine learning you can calculate this distance to understand ki whether this is going to disrupt my current machine learning model or not aap baat ko samjhe nahi maine kafi gehri baat ki hai when you deploy machine learning in the industry you test it on live data live data mein outliers aa jayenge to aapki machine learning performance bahut jaldi niche chali jayegi you don't want that to happen so outliers aana is not your problem because training data mein wo cheez aapko nahi di gayi thi right you were in the training data you did not have those outliers otherwise you would have catered for them in your model let's say that some outlier comes up after 6 months so you can develop such a such an approach of uh, mahala nobis or js js divergence of kls to to find out ki meri jo abhi currently training data ki joint distribution hai how much this row is deviating from that if the deviation is more than a threshold then you don't put that in the model you just signal it ke this is an alert this is some outlier let me understand that and we'll see because if you, if the prediction goes down then the bis then the business is going to ask you ke what is happening the accuracy is going down that's why uh, i mean machine learning is easier said than done baral hamming bas ye karke we'll take the break theek hai Hamming distance is very simple. So, if similarity between two strings of the same length. That's the uh, requirement. So, Euclidean and Manhattan, four, five, six, seven, eight. So, all of them have eight digits. So, what's the Hamming distance? No, no, no. E is different from M. So, one. U is different from A. Two. C is different from N. Three. Four. Five, six, seven. Only the last two digits are the same. So I mean, distance is seven because I'm varying by seven digits. So this key shard key is that you need to have the same length of the string. Sir, so that's the requirement. So the distance is seven. So if you want to put strings in your data, then you can use the Hamming distance. So let's let's. Oh, I've a recording is there. Uh. Okay, so um, there are we can also have this uh, correlation-based distance. This is uh, only useful for gene expressions. So basically, I have three uh, distance measures. One is uh, Pearson correlation. That's based on the Pearson correlation. So I am finding out the distance between two gene expressions. Okay. uh and this is the eisenhower ya eisen distance and this is the spearman correlation distance so all these ha huh? pearson ya yeah. is this is similar to the covariance formula i think that we looked at this is the norm i think some similar to a norm whatever no we got we got these two gene expressions x and y and uh, i have the it's like i think it's uh, ha to the two data points but i also have the mean values uh, you can see these are two columns 
gene expression is is expressed differently i think so i have the mean of that both columns and then i have the data point one value from each of the columns and based on that i am finding that out correlation mein kya hota hai we have i am finding out the uh, correlation between two columns right like covariance correlation is built upon covariance ye to aapko pata hi na cover correlation is covariance normalized so i just normalize the covariance from the denominator and that becomes the correlation ye to humne last time kiya tha ye baat you should remember this so actually this is one minus of that of this so one minus ka kya matlab hua pearson correlation comes in between the minus 1 and 1 range so one minus of that so it's going to give me some distance but typically we do not use this uh, correlation based distancing this seems to be a correlation between the columns like jaise jo apne mahala nobis ka dekha hai na so there what i was doing is ke i was finding the distance from of one point from a density here i have actually two columns x column and y column and i have the means of those columns x bar and y bar and now i have a new pair x and y and i want to find out the distance between these two pairs based on the original values of the columns so it's sort of a different problem as compared to the normal rows that we have okay so just keep in mind that we might need this okay uh, eisen or spearman or pearson uh based on this you you can see it's it's not the normal it's one minus of that so that is probably done on some sort of normalization or whatever okay it's karna pata nahi hai baral just keep in mind that this is also so euclidean distance we have already seen this okay a square minus b square and uh, summation and then square root uh so i can have this uh, without the square of the individual distance and also with the square one square euclidean distance may i am not taking any square root while in the euclidean distance i am taking square but you can i mean these are just two different versions we typically uh, we typically take the square of the distance and then summation karke square root manhattan distance may we saw that there is no power so it's just one okay uh maximum distance max of a minus b i so that's also something that you can do okay what is the maximum distance between two rows and what is the minimum distance between two rows okay so for example okay if this is one row and this is the other row and i have these uh like uh, four values so maybe this minus this is giving me the maximum distance and this minus this is giving the minimum distance so i i will be able to specify a range theek okay. hai and mahala nobis we have already seen k where s is the covariance matrix that is inverted to get that scalar count okay okay so now on to the clustering methods that we have so we have basically five different clustering methods this is the these three are the most famous ones the top three ones okay uh uh these three are not very frequently used we'll just see what those mean what those means okay we saw this playground in the last class if you remember so we'll see it later on so partitioning is primarily an iterative algorithm iterative kya matlab hota hai what does iterative mean happening again and again so partitioning what am i partitioning the the rows because i want to cluster the rows in in different clusters right so i have to partition the data set like in a decision tree decision tree mein the ye hota na i partition the data set so in clustering also i'm doing the same thing so first for example i can create one partition this is cluster 1 and this becomes cluster 2 so primarily i am partitioning okay so suppose we are given n rows and we want to construct k partition that is the k means algorithm so k partition the data each partition will represent a cluster and k is less than equal to n lazmi baat hai na kyunki i can't have that many rows 
uh, I can't have that many clusters as I have that many rows. It is possible to have a maximum value, but why would I want that? अगर मैंने हर रो को एक अलग क्लस्टर में डालना है तो क्लस्टर का फायदा क्या है ठीक है सो दैट्स वाई के इज लेस देन इक्वल टू एन सो ईच क्लस्टर विल कंटेन एटलीस्ट वन दैट्स द क्वेश्चन आई आस्ट इन द बिगनिंग एटलीस्ट वन रो शुड बी देयर एंड ईच रो मस्ट बिलोंग टू एक्जैक्टली वन रो दैट्स दी सो दैट इज नॉट दी सॉफ्ट क्लस्टरिंग पार्टिशनिंग में यू गॉट दार्ड हार्ड क्लस्टरिंग ठीक है uh so you are given the number of partitions initially you will create a partition and then use an iterative technique to improve the partitioning by moving the objects between groups so iski bilkul ek childish example hai so th these are the sort of clusters which you will get in partitioning method spherical but in this case you can see ke all the data is not categorized in spherical so this is a misclassification ये बेसिकली आई हैव ऑलरेडी क्लासिफाइड द डेटा एंड देन ए क्लस्टर इट सो यहाँ पे जो उसने ये पॉइंट्स डाले हैं सो दे शुड नॉट बी हेयर इन दिस स्वीयर राइट दे शुड बी इन अ सेपरेट स्वीयर ऑफ रेड बट दैट इज नॉट हैपनिंग सो अगेन दिस इज आल्सो एन एरर सो स्फेरिकल मेथड्स माइट नॉट ऑलवेज बी द सॉफ्ट क्लस्टरिंग में इट विल गिव यू द फ्लेक्सीबिलिटी but uh, i mean soft clustering may you can have might something like this okay these belong 30% to this sphere and 70% to the other sphere something like that ha uh, either either to chuke wo hard hai na mamla so therefore it is not overlap it's not supposed to overlap that's the requirement so isliye uh, we we never know the ideal value of k and we find out the ideal value through the elbow method theek okay? hai What will happen? क्या होगा अब वो तो सब देर सम रिसर्च मैथड आई जस्ट पुट दिस इमेज टू टेल यू के देर कैन बी मिस क्लासिफिकेशन सो इट्स अ वेरी सिंपल लेट से आई हैव दीज थ्री पॉइंट थ्री आर रेड एंड टू आर वाइट एंड एस ए के कोस टू टू ये तो पहला पॉइंट क्या है स्पेस वैल्यू ऑफ के द सेकंड स्टेप इज के रैंडमली असाइन ईच डेटा पॉइंट टू अ क्लस्टर रैंडम ठीक है सो आई असाइन दिस थ्री पॉइंट्स टू क्लस्टर वन एंड दिस टू ग्रे पॉइंट्स टू क्लस्टर टू रैंडम असाइनमेंट ओके देन कंप्यूट द सेंट्रोइड सो सेंट्रोइड मींस के आई एम टेकिंग द एवरेज ऑफ दिस थ्री रोज अक्रॉस ऑल द कॉलम्स दैट बिकम्स द सेंट्रोइड रो So I represent a cluster by the centroid. So, ये जो red है उसका centroid is the red cross and the white is the white cross. ठीक है. Now when I uh, when I have the centroid, then what is then what I'm what is supposed to happen? What is supposed to happen when I put the centroid? Yeah, so there is going to be a reorientation, right? Okay. So reassign each point to the closest cluster centroid. So first I did that I randomly assigned the points to two clusters. Then according to that random assignment, I discovered the assign uh, centroids. When I put in the centroid, then the assignments are going to change because now the centroid comes up as a new point. I am here. So now I have to recalculate the distance to all the points. So now the ones that are close will be close. Okay. so so now you can see ke reassign the points so due to that uh, i when i reassign it then this becomes the new cluster and ye yani yahan jo mamla tha wo ye wala point jo hai wo iski taraf aa jayega these three points will be the this will become the gray one and these two will become separate and its center is going to go far off like in this case so now it becomes very balanced you guys a very simple example so that's the step 5 i recompute and similarly i repeat this until i converge until there is no more change okay so randomly assign the each row to a cluster compute the centroid uh reassign the points to the new centroid 
then compute the centroid again, then reassign the point to the new centroid. Okay? So that's exactly what I showed you last time. I don't know where was it. Ah, uh, yeah. Where is it? Uh, yeah. So this is pretty. I can restart it. I hope this works. So, so I pick the centroid randomly. Let me make a Gaussian mixture. It's like this. Add centroid. So I want three clusters. Okay. So I put it here. Now I say go. Ab kya hona chahiye? Reassignment hona chahiye na? So now I want to update the centroid. So this green should move here, right? Now again, reassign, move, reassign, update. Now nothing is happening. It was changing a bit, but you see it's changing very slightly. Okay. So that's how there's just two basic steps that you need to understand. Now, it's the problem here that you never know okay, what is the ideal number of clusters. Okay, so you have to do this elbow plot to understand that. Your woman at Dalan is or let's see. Say, is this thing clear? So hierarchical. Hierarchical may let me explain to you in this way. Okay, so. It, again, because I'm using the, the same distance measures as the k-means one. So I'm going to have spherical. I'm partitioning. So I'm, again, I'm going to have spherical. But in this case, I'm con constructing a hierarchy of clusters. Hierarchy ka kya matlab hota hai? Either top down or bottom up. So let's envision at the bottom, I'm going to have every row in separate cluster. Jo aapne se koi baat kar at the top, I'm going to have one cluster containing all the rows. That's it. So in this case, all the rows are clustered in one cluster. Here at the tree, at the root, uh, sorry, at the nodes, all the rows are in separate clusters. Right? This is called hierarchical clustering. This is how it is happening. So there are so many clusters. So where to cut it off? What is the ideal clustering? Is this the ideal clustering? At the re at the at the leaves? No. What about this one? Definitely no. So I I I need a strategy to cut it somewhere, right? I need to cut it somewhere, right? Ideal clusters kitne. So let's see how that happens. So I can con uh, construct the clusters. Top down or bottom up. I, I have both approaches. Top down is called the divisive approach. Uh, I think bottom up uh, bottom up is called the agglomerative. Agglomerative called the jama karna. So I am summing up from the bottom. I have everything in separate clusters. So I'm just tuck, 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 jama karte karte, I'm taking. That's called the agglomerative. If I take everything from the top in one cluster, then I have a divisive approach. That is a bottom-up approach. Uh, sorry, top-down approach. So divisive and agglomerative. So how to do it? We have to cut it off. So let's see how, how things happen. Also, so this is a this is a scenario. So I have these rows which are numbered here. Okay. So it basically how how it works is that you know. Just try to understand it. Why would I cluster 9 and 23? Row number 9 and 23. Why would I cluster it? So at this level, every row is in a separate cluster. Okay. Now, why did I cluster 9 and 23 first? Why not 9 and 17 first? Why? Obviously, because they are closest to each other. Okay. So at this level, 9, 23, 3, 15, 16, 24. Are closest to each other. So I first I group them. And then I see unke kareeb kaun si hai. that is 17. So I group them. 
ओके बाय ग्रुप एंड देन आई सी के इसके करीब कौन सी है वो दैट इज 6 एंड 11 सो आई ग्रुप देम सो इन दिस वे आई 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 डू दिस आइटरेटिव एल दिस इज आल्सो एन आइटरेटिव एल गॉट सही है सो एट ईच टाइम स्टेप आई हैव टू डू अ लॉट ऑफ स्टफ यू अंडरस्टैंड हर टाइम स्टेप के ऊपर मुझे तमाम अभी जो करंट the the current clustering i have i have to find the distance of that clustering to all the points and determine ke which is the closest to me at all at each time step at each step of the algorithm so that is called a lot of hard work so it might take some time if the data is high dimensional theek okay? hai so that is why that is how you read it so so at the bottom we start with 25 data points uh two closer cluster and then merge till we have this one cluster at the top this is called the dendrogram or the dendrogram okay the height in this dendrogram at which two clusters are merged like i'm merging it here behind yeah that represents the distance between two clusters in the data space what does that mean the height at which it is merged represents the distance between two clusters For example, I am merging this cluster and this cluster. This is a at this level, I think this has whole one cluster and this whole has one cluster. So the distance between these two is point four almost. Okay, is this thing clear? Let me mark it here on the. So what I'm saying is that at this level, I am merging. this whole cluster and this whole cluster right all those ke andar bhi clustering hai but i am considering them at this level as two separate clusters right so the, the distance between this cluster and this cluster is the height of this where they are being merged that's what it means so remember this ye quiz bhi aa sakta hai aapka hourly mein bhi aa sakta hai so that's almost equivalent to 0.39 so uh this This cluster and this cluster is 0.39 distance apart. Let's say or 0.39 units apart. So we need to we need to make a decision of the number of clusters that can best depict different groups. That can be done by choosing uh, observing the dendrogram. So let's see how that happens. So I've drawn these two lines. Okay, and let's see. The best choice of the number of clusters is the number of vertical lines. ध्यान रखिएगा इन द डेंडोग्राम द नंबर ऑफ वर्टिकल लाइन एवरी लाइन इज वर्टिकल राइट देर इज नो हॉरिजॉन्टल लाइन बेसिकली आई एम कमिंग आई दर टॉप डाउन और गोइंग बॉटम अप इट्स ऑल वर्टिकल इन नेचर ये तो बस एक लवाजमाती ग्रुप करने के लिए हॉरिजॉन्टल लाइन है सो द नंबर ऑफ वर्टिकल लाइन इन द डेंडोग्राम कट बाय हॉरिजोंटल लाइन दैट कैन ट्रांसवर्स द मैक्सिम डिस्टेंस वर्टिकली विदाउट इंटरसेटिंग इंटरसेक्टिंग अ क्लस्टर so in this case uh what are the two point what are the two lines uh, for example uh so in this case this may you can see k if i plot one line here which is red and i plot the second line here then this is the only situation in which i can traverse the maximum distance without having any cluster merging in between so ab isme y is the value 4 i have four vertical lines that represents four different clusters so the ideal is this is one cluster okay this is the other cluster and uh, this whole is the third cluster and this whole is the fourth cluster what are the disadvantages of hierarchical approach computation is very strong i i mean if i have let's say 50000 rows then the dendrogram is going to be how can i do such a thing there so it's not easy to interpret and it's not easy to control if you can do it then you should do it if your data is simple you can do it but typically this also works very well i don't know kb scikit learn me what are the latest trends whether it finds out the 
it tells you the ideal clusters or it just leaves it to you maine try karke dekha nahi hai so ye baral you know now ke how things work theek hai ha ab get ready for the real stuff theek hai so density what is density what is density kya ho gaya hai no no not probability density density mass per unit volume nahi hai nahi fit kar sakte jab abhi wo joint density distribution hum to volume ki baat kar rahe the data points per unit area so density basically means ke how concentrated the data is and per unit area how much concentration you can get so think about it logically i need a mathematical uh, formalism to calculate the density ye points ek dusre ke kitna kareeb hain aur kab tak kareeb hain you see uh, what i mean to say is ke let's say ke i have some points right here ठीक है एंड आई जस्ट चेंज द कलर एंड आई हैव सम पॉइंट्स हेयर सो लेट मी जस्ट मेक इट लाइक दिस ओके सो इफ आई स्टार्ट फ्रॉम दिस पॉइंट टू फाइंड आउट द डेंसिटी एंड आई मेक अ वेरी स्ट्रिक्ट मेजर ऑफ डेंसिटी कि नहीं यार इज इन दिस रेडियस इफ आई हैव 12 पॉइंट्स दैट्स इट आई एम स्टॉपिंग बट आई शुड आइडियली गो अप टू हेयर सो आई नीड टू हैव सम मैकेनिज्म टू डिटरमिन द dense region jo ban raha hai all of it if i have this gap in between then definitely it should stop here so this is one cluster so your geographical analysis ka jo we were talking about that right spatial analysis so all of that is mostly based on density based algorithms this is a very important algorithm and there are two algorithms jo ke isme zaruri hain in fact more than two now optics and dv scan ke alawa do teen aur hain sahi hai so the basic idea is we want to search the region for dense areas so we want to continue growing the cluster as long as the density exceeds some threshold i want to define it okay what do you mean by threshold tab the maine aapko example abhi i'll show you the example uh the radius of a given cluster has to contain at least a minimum number of points ye baat yaad rakhna i have to do this let's say ke i have this region which is colored with all points so this is one dense region so how can i find it how can i calculate this dense region that's the question right so i can calculate it for example by making a circular approach i start off here and say acha yaar if if in this uh, in a certain radius if this circle contains this many points i start the clustering theek hai ji cluster shuru ho gaya now what so this is one point here so now let's i will make this as the central point and i draw the circle around it around this if this circle also satisfies then i merge that with the previous one and then i see the point somewhere here so this also satisfies this some some of my condition so in this way incrementally i move ahead until my this condition is satisfied ke mere circle ke andar itne points hone chahiye i keep on going ahead until that condition is dissatisfied So let's see the details of that. Okay, it's a very important technique to detect the outliers because outliers are never going to lie in the dense regions. You know, when when the skew happens, the skew is happening because of something which lies far away. So density-based algorithms are ideal for detecting those those sort of situations. So popular are optics and this. Uh, so ye hame thoda sa db scan we need to do this in detail so you just need to be concentrate for the next 10 minutes theek hai if you want to bring tea you can bring it yeah. so this is all logistic thing it requires minimum domain knowledge it can discover clusters of no here the spherical condition is gone okay i would the spherical cluster i don't care now because i'm not partitioning i'm working on density So the clusters are no more spherical. So I can have all the shapes I want. So it's better. Okay. 
and uh, its uh, DB scan has shown very good performance on big data sets. So you should try it out in your experiments in your playground. Oh, sorry. Okay. okay, so now we define some. Uh, we define something. Okay. So this can there you need to be just. Uh, one is the concept of a density. So they are not very complicated concept. Just try to understand this case. At a point, because what do you mean by a point? A row. My job is to determine whether that row is part of the dense region or not. If that row is part of the dense region, welcome, part of the cluster. If not, outlier or a second cluster. Okay. <clears throat> असल में उसका इफेक्ट आ रहा है आपके ऊपर उसकी डेंसिटी का इफेक्ट आ रहा है कैसे ठीक है सो इज दिस इन क्लियर सो मेन थिंग इज के आई हैव दी आई हैव अ पॉइंट सो लेट मी डिफाइन द डेंसिटी एट अ पॉइंट पी एज द नंबर ऑफ पॉइंट्स विद इन अ सर्कल ऑफ रेडियस एप्सिलॉन फ्रॉम पॉइंट पी सो इट्स लाइक दिस के जो भी हमने पिछले लास्ट स्लाइड में बात की है कि इफ दिस इज द पॉइंट के आई सी के I have this eta as the radius or epsilon. Sorry, so epsilon radius. Me, I can define a circle. So that's called the density. How many points are lying within the circle? That's it. So I I have this epsilon because I need the I need the radius to draw a circle. Otherwise, I can't draw a circle. This is why I epsilon. Can be epsilon can be point zero five, point zero zero five. Do we have? I don't know what that would be. One. Uh, we can vary epsilon and obviously the clustering will change theek hai it's one of the hyperparameters dense region kya hoga i have to put some sort of a threshold kitne points hone chahiye ek region in a circle how many points so for that i will give this min points so i got two parameters now ek to epsilon hai and the other is the minimum number of points so now imagine yourself what is happening so i draw Uh, at each point, I draw a radius circle of epsilon radius, and then determine k how many points are in that. If my if this condition is satisfied, then then for me that's a dense region, and all the points lying in that circle then become a part of the same cluster, the same cluster, dense region, and right? that's the same cluster. You understand what I'm saying? So all the points in that circle will belong to the same cluster because I'm trying to discover dense regions. तो इसकी से के अब आई डोंट नो कि जो जो करंट करंट की है जब मैंने उसको लास्ट टाइम यूज किया था वो आप प्ले ग्राउंड वालों का काम है ठीक है बट दीज आर टू पॉसिबल पैरामीटर जो कि अभी फिलहाल फिलहाल यही है और भी है फिलहाल ये इम्पोर्टेंट बात है नहीं नहीं दैट्स दैट्स व्हाट आई एम टेलिंग यू के इफ इफ इट इज समथिंग लाइक दिस ओके लेट मी ड्रॉ इट हियर फॉर दी इफ आई हैव अ कंसंट्रेटेड रीजन लाइक दिस हियर राइट द पॉइंट इज के इफ आई स्टार्ट फ्रॉम हियर आई विल ड्रॉ सर्कल अराउंड इट देन सी इट कंफर्म देन आई विल गो अप When I go up, then I will draw another circle. When I take another point, I take another circle. So yes, so if if my minimum points condition remains satisfied with respect to the previous one, then that is part of the same dense region. So all of this should become one cluster. You understand? Yeh nahi hai ki iske andar mein dust cluster nikal raha hai. I, I, jo, the, the points that are close together are are those points which are dense. So density and the eta, uh, sorry, epsilon and the minimum points. मैं खड़ा इसलिए हो गया हूँ क्योंकि मुझे पता है चीजें आगे मुश्किल आ रही हैं सही है आई डोंट वांट यू टू ओके ऑल ऑफ दिस एक एक तो हो गया एप्सिलॉन फिर मिनिमम नंबर ऑफ पॉइंट्स दैट्स पॉइंट क्लियर राइट देन आई आल्सो आई नीड अ डिस्टेंस मेजर हाउ टू कैलकुलेट द डिस्टेंस राइट सो दैट वुड बी एनी डिस्टेंस मेजर वी चूज हाँ सो This is not going to make the things spherical. 
स्पेरिकल हैपन्स बिकॉज ऑफ द पार्टिशनिंग अप्रोच जो कि हम के मीन्स में हर आर्टिकल में करते हैं हे वी आर नॉट डूइंग एनी पार्टिशनिंग अल्टरनेटिव पार्टिशनिंग वी नॉट डूइंग इट वी आर जस्ट मूविंग द सर्कल अप अंटिल द डेंसिटी फिनिशेज सही है is this thing clear i this is not the partitioning approach okay so i define a new measure which is called the epsilon neighborhood epsilon uh minimum number of points in the circle and the points in the circle are called the epsilon neighborhood yani the circle is called the epsilon neighborhood basically sahi hai epsilon neighborhood usko main i represent that as np np defines the epsilon neighborhood of the point p np defines the circle basically so basically wo notations aapko bata rahe hain sahi hai kya q i have this point p this is the main thing i draw a circle around it of radius epsilon now this is called the epsilon neighborhood उसको स्पेसिफाई करने के लिए किया now if i have a point i will classify the point as a core point if epsilon neighborhood is greater than minimum points finish so if i have the point p here and my minimum points is 12 i have this point p right and then i'm going to mark it so i have uh, this point p i draw the radius epsilon neighborhood and my minimum points is let's say 3 let's say 3 so i have 1 2 3 so, so all these three points are lying uh, these two points are lying less than epsilon distance so they are lying within the circle so can i cluster these three together yes and then i can classify p as a four point फोर पॉइंट वो है जो कि सर्कल के सेंटर में होगा और यस इट्स सॉर्ट ऑफ अ सेंट्रोइड यू कैन से इट्स अ फोर पॉइंट बिकॉज उसके के जो सर्कल है दैट इज सेटिस्फाइंग द मिनिमम पॉइंट्स रिक्वायरमेंट सो द सर्कल ऑफ पी इज सेटिस्फाइंग बाय मिनिमम पॉइंट्स रिक्वायरमेंट सो आई कॉल दैट एज अ फोर पॉइंट ओके एंड द फोर पॉइंट्स इज वेरी क्लोज टू द सेंटर ऑफ द क्लस्टर ठीक है और uh, एक चीज हमारे पास क्या है दैट्स कॉल्ड अ बॉर्डर पॉइंट border point has fewer than minimum points within the theta neighborhood finish so if i have uh, this point p and uh, this is the eta neighborhood and i just have one point within this circle jo ke eta se kam hai iske kareeb so is this a core point or a border point this p is a core point or border point why a border point because minimum point requirement is not being satisfied so it's a border point If the minimum requirement is satisfied for a point P, it's called a core point. Core point means that something that is definitely part of the cluster. Border point could be, could be not. ठीक है वो देखते हैं उसका क्या तर्जी बन गई. और अगर core भी नहीं है, border भी नहीं है. ये एक point ऐसा है कि उसकी eta neighborhood में कुछ भी नहीं आ रहा. No other point is coming. Then no, it's an outlier. ठीक है. So as simple as it. So this is an example. You can see that this is the core point. I don't know minimum seven is the number. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So this is the core point because around it, this is the around it, and the seven points are there. Okay. This in fact is the border point because in its theta neighborhood, I just have four points, not seven points. So less than minimum point, so this becomes the border point. Uh. Okay, I will ask you. What about what about this point? If I draw the circle around that, I think this is a circle. So this is on the border of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So one of these is also the core point. So I have a series of core points together, 
जिसमें एंड में बॉर्डर पॉइंट यहां पर भी है और एंड में बॉर्डर पॉइंट यहां पर भी है दिस इज आउट एपन्स रिमेंबर की वेन द डेंस रीजन इज फिनिशिंग आई एम ऑन टू द बॉर्डर पॉइंट वेन द डेंस रीजन इज यू आर इन द सेंटर ऑफ दैट देर कॉन बी सीरीज ऑफ कोर पॉइंट सही है क्लियर है कॉन्सेप्ट कहां पे हा तो देखिए दिस सर्कल इज ड्रॉन अराउंड सम पॉइंट है तो वन ऑफ दीज वन ऑफ दीज इन वन ऑफ दीज सर्कल ये जो ये जो दिस इज द एप्सिलॉन नेबल ऑफ द वन ऑफ दीज सर्कल सो आई थिंक इट इज दिस पॉइंट राइट सो अराउंड इट 1 2 3 4 5 सो दीज आर एट दी दीस आर नॉट एक्चुअली इनसाइड सो आई हैव फाइव ऑफ देम सो दिस इज द बॉर्डर पॉइंट दिस इज द बॉर्डर पॉइंट बॉर्डर पॉइंट मेन कॉन्सेप्ट आपको समझ में आया वट अबाउट दैट ग्रीन वाई आउटलाइन सॉरी बिकॉज वे लुकिंग फॉर डेंस रीजन डेंस का मतलब है कि सर्कल में कुछ तो लेके आओ एटलीस्ट एक तो लेके आओ यहां तो एक भी नहीं है तो देन दैट मीन्स के दिस इज अस एंड वट अबाउट दिस वन दिस कुड फॉर्म एन अदर डेंस रीजन So, uh, how many clusters I'm going to have here? In this diagram, how many clusters I'm going to have? In a density-based method, three. Who else? Who is saying two? Sabash. Two. Who is saying one? Four. Two. Two. Who is saying one? Four. Two. Who is saying one? बहुत अफसोस की बात है इंतहाई अफसोस की बात टॉकिंग अबाउट डेंसिटी हाउ मेनी डेंस रीजन यू सी हेयर माफ करे मुझे भाई दिस इज वन रीजन दिस इज दीजन दिस इज दर्ड रीजन यू आर सपोज टू डिट नॉइस एज वेल ये सो इट इज गोइंग टू आउटपुट थ्री क्लस्टर यू कॉन्ट स्पेसिफाई कितने क्लस्टर बनाने बिकॉज The density of the data is up is up to the algorithm. I can't specify that three banana do, four banana do. It's going to out. It should output three. If this is the outlier point, which is low density, this has somewhat density and this is high density. How come two? Or color be three banana, then be two? It's really. Hey, so I have three. Okay, so now this is. इसका हल क्या है मिनिमम पॉइंट आपके कंट्रोल में मैं चाहता हूं कि ये कोर पॉइंट बन जाए मिनिमम पॉइंट्स को कम करते हैं उसका नुकसान क्या होगा नहीं नहीं ये तो फिर भी स्टिल भी देर देवल स्टिल भी देर डेंसिटी तो कम नहीं होगी आई विल नॉट बी एबल टू डिटेक्ट नॉइस नॉइस आई माइट आई माइट कॉम्प्रोमाइज ऑन दी नॉइस पार्ट अगर मैं मिनिमम पॉइंट्स वन कर दू ठीक है तो मे बी समिंग जो कि मुझे नॉइस अभी सेवन पॉइंट से मिल रही मुझे ना मिले Although it is a maybe maybe I have two points in the noise. ये भी तो हो सकता है ना कि if I have two points here, two green points, both of them are noise. But if I say minimum point one, then I lose it. ठीक है? So therefore I can't say minimum points को बहुत कम करते हैं. I can't say that. I have to make it up to five, six, seven, something like that to ensure. So that's that's one problem. तो इन्होंने इसको solve करने के लिए uh, they gave this method of directly density reachable. डायरेक्टली डेंसिटी रीचेबल का मतलब है कि आई एम इन दिलोन नेबरहुड ऑफ दैट दैट्स इट यू सी के टू पॉइंट्स आर डायरेक्टली डेंसिटी रीचेबल इफ ए इज इन दिलोन नेबरहुड ऑफ बी दैट्स इट सो वट इज दैट मीन इज के इफ आई हैव दिस सर्कल इसका ईटा नेबरहुड है एंड आई हैव अ पॉइंट हेयर विच इज लेस देन ईटा डिस्टेंस फ्रॉम दैट then this point is directly dense, directly density reachable from this four point obviously this is the four point and this is the point this is directly density reachable from the 
uh, eat a neighborhood of that. So if they are just assigning another terms. Usse fir ek concept would derive kare density reachable. Now understand this ke I will just try to explain this concept by here. Density connected and density reachable. So let me go directly here. What they are they are just saying is ke we talked about this issue ke these are not this region is not a problem because the core core uh, you 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 do such a thing ke for example so if I have the limit of five so let's assume I have five points here this becomes a core point in the center then I draw the circle around this so iske circle ye gaya so let's see ke isme let's assume isme bhi five points aage. So in this way, I can keep on proceeding ahead as, as long as I'm getting the core points. The problem is that when I reach this, when I reach this point, the border points, then I have a confusion because then I start to lose out on the minimum point requirement. That is why the border point. So I do not know where to stop. I, I don't know how to determine the border point. I need a mechanism to determine the border point. Minimum point of come the border point But that seems to be a very crude sort of definition. So what they are saying is they define these two concepts: density reachable and density connected. A and B uh, where's the formula? This is the B, this is the A. So I found a border here. And I found a border here. Okay. I found a border on the upper side and I found a border on the lower side. Now I want some sort of confirmation that this is actually the border of the dense region. We just mathematically to formalize karna chahi, you know? Why is it called a border? Because this is the border of the dense region. And I do want to demarcate that, but how should I do it? So they give the concept of uh, density reachable from a core point C. I can reach A from B, if I start from here. I can reach A from B, if I am going through a series of core points and ending up at B. If I am traversing a series of core points in between and arriving at B. Simple, that's the mathematical definition. You can border. I go to see the four points, I end up at B. That means that these two are the borders. That's the definition. And then I, I call them A and B are density reachable. And I call them A and B are density connected points. So now I define the border of my dense region and I'm finished. There's nothing there. So that means so I go from here or start randomly from other point. Okay. Is this thing clear? So now who is going to tell me how the algorithm will work? Just I told you the algorithm, right? If this is the picture, how the algorithm will work? Okay, let me let me do something else as well. So let me make some points here. And let me make a single point here. So now, how the algorithm will start? Imagine you. Then I have told you. How do you start? How do you start? K means random. We have to do something random. What What is the random thing? You tell me. The first step should be logically. Yes. Select any point randomly. Or uska eta neighborhood draw kare. If it satisfies the minimum point requirement, well and good, start the clustering. If it does not, document that information, maybe it's noise, and then start randomly from another place. In this case, let's say I start from here. So I can discover this region. If I go in both directions, I will discover the border here and I will discover the border here. Because I will do, go incrementally, I will start digging there, right? If I even find one circle, this satisfies the minimum point requirement, that's an indication it's a dense region. 
So why would I have to jump to a randomly to another point? I will never do it. Until and unless I reach the border points here and use the density connected formalism to confirm that these are the border points, then I will say your heart density is So I, I discovered this. Then what? All of these are clustered now. What do I do now? Select another point. How? Randomly, randomly select. So either it will select this one or any of the green one. So green one, when I go to the side, I select karto, the border point. Hoga. But border point is also something which the algorithm knows it's a border point. So it is going to go up in that and discover the core point. In this way, it will discover the all the core region. Now what? What remains? Ah, ye cluster ban gaya. Ab kya rehta hai? Huh? Which random point? Only one point remains. Which one? The red one. So its epsilon neighborhood is zero. So it will say it's noise. Who will say it? You will say it. You will say it. It's noise. Agar ek ya do ho sirf, you will say it's possibly noise. Okay. Algorithm finished. So when I ask you in the hourly, for example, to write down the basic conceptual flow, so you should be able to write that down without looking at the pseudocode. Jo ke ye, uh, don't even read it. If you have understood what I told you right now, you can listen to the video again, write it in your own words. That's how you will learn, right? Ye isko ya, isko yaad thodi karna hai. Baki to kuch lavazmati cheeze hote hai ke randomly start normally from a random distribution, seed kare, ye kare, wo kare. Sahi hai toh. So I'm skipping this up. Okay, I'll just explain it. I hope the people online have also gotten it. Now, eh? okay. Uh, the the point is the like we take the example here, right? Okay. If I start randomly from here, I should discover this dense region. If this uh, if this is close to that, I will definitely make this part of that. Agar ye distance itna zyada nahi hai, I will say, but typically, if you if you find even a little bit of distance, then it is the tendency to separate it in a separate cluster. In this case, when I have epsilon one, so what's the answer? Is that that's not right? How can that be right? Epsilon one, agar aap rakhenge, epsilon neighborhood one, rakhenge, that's too high a value. So it's going to put everything in one plus. That's the extreme, right? Or if epsilon zero, you see it's a rainbow. That's not what you want. It's a high level value. Something like that. But let's see what happens in between. Epsilon 0.5, this seems pretty reasonable. Because this seems closer to that. And no. Uh, so, oh, so this is the outlier point. Okay, so this is the outlier point. This is one plus a disk in reasonable. And uh, now, if you start this uh, 0. 0.5, 0. 0.3, then things start to go a bit out of track. I can't have these as outliers. There's no way. This is the same dense region, right? Otherwise, uh, again, it, it's doing something very strange here. And it, it's not able to understand what is happening here. So it all gets very oily. So you can see that this seems to be the best. The lesser the clusters, the better. Because, I mean, I want to understand my customer. So it's sure that the customer behavior is, def is probably going to follow such a density based method. You can't have spherical clusters. Both mushkil. Unless you have two columns. If your customer data is two three columns hai, and you just have a few thousand rows, then maybe K means will work for you. Yeah. Yes. G. Uh, last time, yeah. Yeah. Once you discover a core point, it's going to take one of the points in that circle and take that as the. Draw the neighborhood around that. 
यानी जो जो करंट आपका जो कोर पॉइंट है तो उसके सर्कल के अंदर इफ देर आर पॉइंट शुड बी पॉइंट सो इट गोन अज्यूम वन ऑफ दैम एंड ड्रॉ द सर्कल अराउंड दैट सो इट गोन मूव अप हाँ, वो बेसिकली चारों तरफ उसको सर्च करना चाहिए ना थिंक अबाउट इट लॉजिकली द रीजन कुड गो लाइक दिस लाइक दिस एंड लाइक दिस एंड लाइक दिस सो इट शुड सर्च ऑन फोर साइड्स सही है अंटिल इट फाइंड्स द बॉर्डर पॉइंट्स ऑन ऑल दिस साइड्स समथिंग लाइक अच्छा ये थोड़ा सा वो है इट्स अ कंपैरिजन बिटवीन डिफरेंट एल्गोरिथम्स दिस अफिनिटी प्रोपगेशन मिनी बैच सो इन दिस इन दिस जस्ट ट्राई टू अंडरस्टैंड के द आउटपुट्स of different algorithms are different what calculate for the common the time is also written here so probability i think that it will be okay so actual testing is the most time so you can see the difference between all of these by the way mini batch k means is like the stochastic gradient descent if you have lots and lots of rows then mini batch k means is working on the batches of data applying k means on different batches of data rather than the whole uh, train it together this is key performance kafi achhi aati hai as compared to traditional k means theek okay? hai so it does it like this and infinity propagation does it like this mean shift is not able to do anything structure clustering maybe this is a good thing uh, yeah this seems to be the best one i think and uh, agglomerative is also good db scan is also good and birds is not good You see, a DB scan seems to be uh, a good match here, along with agglomerative and the spectral clustering. The others are not good, huh? Because the the ideal clustering is this one, right? So this is a dense region, this is another region. I I can't merge these two. Uh, in this case, it assumes that this is one thing, this is one thing, but considering the space in between, so. the performance could be different for different scenarios i am really not sure how things work um chale tell me the drawbacks of db scan think about it yourself don't see what is written here i will also think along with you what are the drawbacks see let's say i have dense regions with a little space in between very close together six or seven different dense regions so ideally they should be separated but db scan is going to put them all in one cluster so there could be situation in every uh, in which every cluster and got from will fail ye ho sakta hai theek hai as you know sare the आपका काम ये है कि हैव टू ट्राई आउट डिफरेंट थिंग्स अकॉर्डिंग टू योर एक्सपीरियंस एंड सी व्हाट इज वर्किंग सही है सो सेटिंग अप द एप्सिलॉन एंड मिनिमम पॉइंट्स इज ट्रिकी सो ये आप लोग जब अपना उसमें प्ले ग्राउंड में जाएंगे तो फिर आपको पता चलेगा कि हाउ दीज थिंग्स आर अफेक्टिंग ठीक है इसको तो हम जल्दी जल्दी ब्राउज करेंगे आई एम नॉट गोइंग डिटेल्स ऑफ दैट ग्रिड बेस मेथड द ऑब्जेक्ट्स अ The all the rows together form a grid. The, the all the rows are quantized into finite number of cells that form a grid structure. So I assume that the trailing data forms a grid, and the different rows are in different cells of that grid. Okay. Uh, it's a fast processing time. It is dependent only on the number of cells in each dimension in the quantized space. This is not a very common approach, but this is one way of looking at the trailing data. But it's pretty simple. ज्यादा तर पार्टिशनिंग हाइरार्किकल एंड डेंसिटी बेस्ड मेथड्स आर बीइंग यूज्ड नॉट ग्रिड बेस्ड मेथड्स या मॉडल बेस में वी अज्यूम के एवरी क्लस्टर फॉलोस अ डिफरेंट मॉडल और अ गॉसियन डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन फॉर एग्जांपल सो दैट्स द मिक्सचर मॉडल टाइप ऑफ थिंग जो कि मैं बात कर रहा था कि एवरी क्लस्टर फॉलोस अ नॉर्मल डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन सो एवरी क्लस्टर कैन हैव इट्स ओन नॉर्मल डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन एंड दे कैन ओवरलैप so that's the gaussian mixture scenario theek okay? hai in this way i can also have some other model being followed by any cluster so it reflects a special distribution of the points but we will concentrate more on mixture modeling so just to tell you uh in this case i will have some constraints or conditions to cluster that's the constraint based method uh it refers to the user expectation or the properties of derived clustering results 
कि भाई मुझे तो ये चाहिए मुझे तो ये चाहिए आई वॉन्ट इट लाइक दिस आई वॉन्ट दिस मैनी क्लस्टर आई वॉन्ट दिस मच सो देन यू कैन आई कैन पुट दस्टेंट एंड डू द क्लस्टर ठीक है uh it's an interactive way of communication constraints can explain about the user or the application requirement so this is like putting in the feedback and then do this so aap kvins apply kar le but with a very strong feedback so that will be like constraint based but these things are not very common okay okay so uh, you can make a synthetic dataset in python by using this make classification function you can make 1000 example the online example padi hui hai uh so this is uh, so like for example this is a synthetic data set jo humne classify kiya jaan buch ke to test the clustering sahi hai so this is this is the the original shape of the data set and now we'll see how the different clustering methods are performing on this theek hai so mini batch came now these are some of the latest algorithms jo ke scikit may have become very famous in the last 5 or 6 years so you can't just work with hierarchical and db scan they are pretty old so yeah so you need to have knowledge of these as well theek uske baad hum kuch thode se quizzes wagaira kar lenge just mcqs so mini batch k means mein um using mini i told you the basic idea so you take the batch of data rather than the whole training data and construct the clusters on that theek hai uh which can make it faster for larger data sets so it is implemented by the mini batch k means class So let's see the performance. So this is the original one, classification, and that is mini batch k-means. So what's you can see that there is a lot of misclassification here. Here there is also misclassification. It's not an ideal performance. Right? Yeah. As uh, probably because of the I don't know is this spherical thing. Is this a spherical thing? it could be a very different strange sort of sphere okay k means uh, this is the mini batch k means and k means is this so you can see there's not much difference in this uh, because this is a pretty simple data set okay 1000 rows only and two columns that's why i'm able to plot it right <laughs> so isme to itna farak nahi padega so db scan mein it goes like this so what do you think <laughs> it's quite good it's quite good it's i think able to detect this line and this region uh, but it is uh, so when we observe this and then we take a certain point then but it may be theek hai let's see here kya kya hai dekhen when you see the output of this clustering then you are going to have three clusters right so in the in the blue one in the blue one that data is going to be very less it can't noise this is supposed to be part of the same that thing it's not noise noise can be somewhere here or probably this might be probably due to the noise okay ha ho sakta lekin at least ye points to noise hone ke liye you can control them through the eta and the uh, minimum points parameter or fitting ka kya matlab hota hai ये इसमें इसमें जबरदस्ती क्या हो रही है हाँ ओवर फिटिंग का मतलब ये होता है कि यू लर्न द ट्रेनिंग डेटा इन अ वेरी गुड वे इफ इट वाज ओवर फिटिंग इट शुड डू समथिंग एग्जैक्टली लाइक दिस क्लस्टरिंग हैज नथिंग टू डू विद ओवर फिटिंग क्लस्टरिंग ओनली वर्क फॉर इट्स मैथमेटिकल अप्रोच सही है बिकॉज आपने वो मिनिमम पॉइंट थोड़े से प्रॉब्लम आपने ज्यादा रखे या कम रखे ज्यादा रखे इसकी वजह से दे आर बीइंग लेफ्ट आउट दे आर नॉट यूजिंग द बॉर्डर पॉइंट्स तो लेकिन द गुड पॉइंट इज के इट इज एबल टू इट इज एबल टू ग्रुप ऑल ऑफ दी सराउंडिंग पॉइंट्स इनटू अ इन द सेम क्लस्टर इन द सेम क्लस्टर रिमेंबर दिस भाई वो उसके क्योंकि ये वो इन सबके बॉर्डर पॉइंट्स आए लेकिन दे आर नॉट If they were border points, then they would be part of this. Right? So they have something which are close to border points. So, which is also another question. Oh, sorry, sir. Green can be the blue. Let's go. Now, so they have something. 
क्लासिफिकेशन ओवरलैप तो होगा ना इट्स नॉट गोइंग टू बी हंड्रेड परसेंट सॉर्ट ऑफ थिंग इट्स इट्स अ फॉर्मूला इट इज द फॉर्मूला विल नॉट वर्क आईडीली फॉर एवरी डेटा पॉइंट आई डोंट नो के व्हाई दिस दिस टू आर वेरी क्लोज टुगेदर और डिफरेंट कलर्स बट मे बी देयर इज सम कैलकुलेशन जिस की बेस पे ये सिचुएशन आ गई हो ठीक है वी डोंट नो द एग्जैक्ट ईवी स्कैन इंप्लीमेंटेशन फॉर एनी टू you do make some compromises to ensure ke hard clustering ho i don't have partial clustering as i don't soft clustering to nahi hai na you do you do make some compromises to ensure ke hard clustering ho unke jo compromises implemented honge maybe based on those so just get the general idea here right when you play with the data then you will understand it's going to be a very different sort of situation theek hai ye hierarchical clustering hai तो में आप देख रहे हैं इट्स अ वर्ल्ड बिट बेटर इवन डू से नॉट इट्स इस इस एरर को जस्ट रिमूविंग दिस लार्ज एरर इन बिटवीन दिस ये जो एरर है ये जो रिमूविंग दिस एरर एग्लोमेटिव सीम्स प्रेटी गुड आई टोल्ड यू के इट इज इट इट डज गुड गिव अ गुड परफॉर्मेंस इन मेनी सिचुएशन ठीक है mean shift this is also very famous algorithm involves finding and adapting centroids based on the density of examples in the features this is also density based example algorithm uh ye unki apne paper se hai the convergence of a recursive mean shift procedure to the nearest stationary point of the underlying density function and thus its utility in detecting the modes of the density uh so they probably what they are doing is they are probably estimating the density function a probability density function of the current data that they have and then they are determining jo ke main aapko bataya tha ki kaun sa distance tha mahala nobis ke whether the current point is should be part of the density or not based on the correlation measurement so very if it is close then make it part of the same density so here they are working probably with densities probability densities so the all the points that i currently have in my database Uh, sorry in my cluster i find out the probability density which i can estimate theek hai or and i and i see ke jo dusre jo points are whether they are close to this density or not if they are then merge them otherwise so isme bandwidth parameter aur hyper parameter hota hai you need to play with that so this is the this seems pretty good this is for the mean shift so like db scan it is also able to determine three clusters okay but the shape of db scan and this is different so here that's why i have to tell you that you never know which is the best one optics is a modified version of db scan optics ka matlab kya hai ordering points to identify so it does not produce a clustering or data set explicitly but instead creates an augmented ordering of the data points representing its density based clustering structure uh this ordering contains information which is equivalent to the density based clustering corresponding to broad range of parametric settings um ordering so it creates an order just remember that we are not going to be asked details about it but you should remember the algorithm is there so mean shift estimates the probability density uh optics is similar to db scan but it creates an ordering of the data points based on the density jo uski values aa rahi hai theek hai so just some something like that so it's uh, implemented by the optics class and these are the two hyper parameters that is that so again this is also based on density so you can see ke the ordering is not working for us right so bent uh, point is also not very commonly used db scan is much better and also the mean shift one So it's not pretty good. So scattered clustering are drawn from data algebra. Uh, so it's very much highly applied. It one uses the top eigen vectors of a matrix derived from the distance between points. So you have the distance between points, and you have the eigen uh, eigen vector matrix from that, and use that to cluster. obviously we are not that's going to the touch the details of that but it it basically uses linear algebra methods to to that project ke liye if any one of you is interested in discovering more about a particular algorithm ye to 
then you can dig down into that algorithm, read the paper, and then implement it on your own or make some extension of that. Those who are into research can do such a thing. Okay? But this is basically based on the uh, linear algebra. Okay? So spectral clustering class and blah, blah, blah. These are the parameters. So let's see its performance. That's pretty good. You see? So we saw comparison, we saw the hierarchical DB scan and spectral clustering were performing good. So these are the three that you need to keep in mind for even your business data sets. So that's, I think this is one of the best ones right now, up to now. So these two are the last ones. Birch involves cluster three structure from which cluster centroids are expected. So it should be similar to that, right? Incrementally and dynamically clusters in coming multi-dimensional metric data points to try to use the best quality clustering with available data. Um, uh, so balance iterative reducing and plus using hierarchy. So this is sort of an extension of the hierarchical approach, but this is not a very famous algorithm. So it, again, we construct a tree structure like a dendrogram, but it is more optimized as compared to the agglomerative case or the divisive case. Hey, this is one of the best ones, yeah? So what is better? In fact, I think spectral or yeto, they are the winners, right? So because this is also based on the hierarchical method. So it turns out that hierarchical spectral and density are, okay, you need to, you need to, you need to do this birch one. So affinity propagation involves finding a set of data points that are best summarizing the data. So. Affinity means closeness. Propagation means pro propagation of that closeness. So what we're trying to do is that we're trying to find the data points that best summarize the data. So it's, it's, it's a similar to the density-based methods, but not that much sophisticated. So because density is more sophisticated mathematically. Uh, so real valued messages are exchanged between data points until a high quality set of exemplars and corresponding question gradually matches. So it seems that they have some sort of a framework in which points can talk to each other and tell each other ke how much affinity we have based on some mathematical formula. And the affinity is more, they put them in the cluster, not the density-based approach, but somewhat similar to that. Let's see the result. Oh my God. So, it's terrible, yeah. So, actually, it's able to discover lots and lots. We were saying that if we want to force the clusters, Right, so this could be sort of a check, which you can do. Affinity chart. Okay. So, are they building something now or not? This is one of them. They can give you, I don't know why this is here. I mean, you can put the different points in the same way. They put it out there. I don't know the formula can do. I forgot about that. It seems that. It's quite clear that it's quite clear. Okay. Know about it to avoid it, probably, in this case. Okay, so we'll stop here. We'll do just do some... Uh, huh. Clustering quiz. Energy. Very quickly, just we just have 15 minutes and we will to do both the sans the goal of clustering a data set is to, which of these is right? <clears throat> Why not the second one? Determine the nearest neighbors of each of the data. Ah, for nearest neighbors are is basically affinity propagation. So we are not interested in that, we are just designing clustering. Okay, so this is the answer, I hope. Eh? The K-means algorithm, G.
Come on. Zoom. First one. First one. Yes. Which one? The term is convert to a cluster that minimizes the mean square vector. क्या कह रहे हैं sorry डॉक्टर साहब दोबारा बोले सर ये पहला वाला जो लिखा है आन बस कन्वर्ट टू एक्सप्लेस्ट नहीं मीन स्क्वेयर्ड वेक्टर रिप्रेजेंटेटिव डिस्टेंस आई डोंट इवन नो व्हाट दैट मींस आई थिंक इट इज दिस कैन कन्वर्ट्स टू डिफरेंट फाइनल क्लस्टरिंग डिपेंडिंग ऑन इनिशियल चॉइस ऑफ रिप्रेजेंटेटिव्स इफ आई चेंज द वैल्यू ऑफ के द क्लस्टरिंग विल चेंज दैट सीम्स टू बी द बेस्ट रिस्पांस ठीक है one can all one can also be true but i don't know k whether the choice of k is a personal cho ab bitaye choice of k ke bare mein kya hai <laughs> it shouldn't be discussed in public yaar come on yaar the strain depends on why you are clustering the data ठीक है दैट सीम्स टू बी द बेस्ट अच्छा के मींस के बारे में विच ऑफ दीज आर करेक्ट हां अब आपका नॉलेज टेस्ट होगा ना इज इट सेंसिटिव टू आउटलाइन नहीं वो स्फेरिकल में इसको ना मर्ज इन एवरीथिंग इट्स नॉट सेंट आउट लाइट सो जल्दी बताएं कैन डिटेक्ट नॉन कॉन्वेक्स क्लस्टर नॉन कॉन्वेक्स का क्या मतलब होता है नॉट स्फेरिकल सो दैट्स रॉन्ग वी डिटेक्ट स्फेरिकल क्लस्टर दिस इज द आंसर द सेंट्रॉइड इन द के मीन मे नॉट बी एनी ऑब्जर्व डेटा पॉइंट एंड दैट इज ट्रू बिकॉज वेन ए कंप्यूटर सेंट्रॉइड इट्स अपरेट डेटा पॉइंट which is the average of all the remaining ones theek hai okay k median k means or k median mein what's the difference in k means i am finding out the average of rows to find out the class centroid in k median i am finding out the median of all the All the points in their cluster. So median or mean? Me, what difference is there? Ah, right. So yeah, let's. If point zero, three, two, one, and minus two are the only points assigned to first cluster now. Okay. So let's calculate this. Ah, huh, so minus two, zero, two. If I sort it, write it minus two, zero, two, and One two three, so zero two is the answer. That's right. Okay. So we have three centroids. We are given this here. Will points two three and two point five be assigned to the same cluster in the next iteration? So we just have to find the distance from each of these points, each of these centroid. So two three, it is closest to which centroid? Two one, right? Two three should be closest to two one. Uh, and what about two point five? After two one, so they should they will be in the same cluster. Okay. अच्छा ये तो let's leave it there. Ah, uh, which of the following statements are true? Um, can Can we perform cluster analysis of graph data? We can. ठीक है. Time series में भी we can. ठीक है. Um, text में भी we can. Uh, multimedia multimedia data क्या होता है? Huh? Yeah, images. Yeah, this seems to be true. 
टेक्स्ट में तो वो डॉक्यूमेंट्स का तो जैसा होल्ड हां टाइम सीरीज में थोड़ा सा आई कैन क्लस्टर बेस्ड ऑन टाइम होता है आई हैव सीन द पेपर बिल्कुल उसके उसके डिफरेंट अप्रोचेस हैं एग्लोमरेटिव क्लस्टरिंग इज एन एग्जांपल ऑफ हायरार्किकल एंड डिस्टेंस बेस्ड दिस इज आल्सो ट्रू दिस इज आल्सो ट्रू हां व्हिच ऑफ द फॉल हां पॉसिबल टू क्लस्टर ऑब्जेक्ट इन डेटा स्ट्रीम I think that is possible, but this is wrong. When plus thing we want to put two dissimilar, that's wrong. So this is the right answer. Okay. Ah, uh, so this is the basic question. Here yeah, we skip. कर देते हैं. Ah, two types कौन सी हैं जी? Top down and bottom. Bottom top है. Bottom up होना चाहिए ना. Bottom top. What is a dendrogram? ठीक है इज़ द आंसर द मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट पार्ट ऑफ डैश इज सिलेक्टिंग द वेरिएबल्स ऑन विच क्लस्टरिंग इज बेस्ड सी नहीं है बहुत आसान है यार हरीम आप बताइए इट कुड बी द केस बट आई थिंक दिस इज द आंसर बिकॉज वेन यू टॉक ऑफ वेरिएबल्स और हाइपर पैरामीटर्स सो वीर मोर टूवर्ड्स इंटरप्रेटिंग एंड प्रोफाइलिंग द क्लस्टर्स तो हमें पता है ना हाइपर पैरामीटर्स की बेस पे दीज थिंग्स विल चेंज सो दैट्स दैट सीम्स मोर क्लोज द मोस्ट कॉमनली यूज मेजर ऑफ सिमिलैरिटी इज दी ये सिटी सिटी ब्लॉक इज द मैन हाँ ठीक है ठीक है हाँ चले शाबाश ये बताए डैश इज अ क्लस्टरिंग प्रोसीजर वेयर ऑल ऑब्जेक्ट स्टार्ट आउट इन वन जॉइंट क्लस्टर डिवाइस यू क्लस्टरिंग टॉप डाउन ठीक है विच आर द फॉलोइंग इज रिक्वायर्ड बाई के मीन्स अच्छा ये डायग्राम देखें हाउ मेनी क्लस्टर्स विल बी फॉर्म टू एग्जैक्टली ट्राइड ठीक है चूज द आंसर और सो दिस इज अ बेसिक क्वेश्चन ये आई मीन ही इज आस्किंग कि अगर मैं लाइन या ड्रॉ करूं देन व्हाट इज द आइडियल नंबर ऑफ क्लस्टर्स So one line basically comes here and the other comes here. That's the maximum you can have with two clusters. So K means me. What happens in the inner loop? Which two point points are happening in the inner loop? A and this. Yeah, you are. Na centroid update ho rahe hain and the points are being reassigned. अच्छा एल्बो मेथड में आपको बता नहीं पाया आई फॉर गॉट टू इंक्लूड दैट बेसिकली सो आई विल टेल यू अबाउट दैट इन द नेक्स्ट क्लास ओके सो हो जाए कुछ नहीं होता ये बच्चों वाला है बहुत गोल ऑफ क्लस्टरिंग क्लस्टरिंग इज अच वन फॉलोइंग क्लस्टरिंग न्यूनतम सफर्स ऑन द प्रॉब्लम कन्वर्जेंस एट लोकल ऑप्टिमा ध्यान रखिएगा जरा व्हाट इज द प्रॉब्लम ऑफ कन्वर्जेंस एट लोकल ऑप्टिमा के इट इज नॉट एबल टू डिटरमिन द आइडियल नंबर ऑफ क्लस्टर्स नहीं आई आर्टिकल में तो आई हैम आई एम आई देर एट दॉप और आई हैव लॉट्स ऑफ फ्लेक्सिबिलिटी 
It's not possible for me to. I think K means is the answer. K means is the answer in which I can because I I have K is in my hand, so I might be wrong. Yeah. Which version of clustering is most sensitive to outliers? K mode is. Uh, K mode, I think, is used for string-based data clustering. There are two algorithms. Uh, CLOP. CLOP is one of them for string-based data. CLOP and K modes are K midoids. So, so, this is used for string-based data. Well, I have used CLOP in uh, most sensitive to outliers. Median is the name. Median will not be sensitive to outliers. Mean will be sensitive to outliers. Because if you take the mean of an outlier, then mean mean. Which of the following is a bad characteristic of data set for clustering analysis? Because non convex shape, so why is that a bad characteristic? I can use my density use karnuga. different densities. Koi masla nahi, wo to hoti hai. Outliers ka masla hai. Clustering ko disturb karenge. Hai? For clustering, we do not require label data. Is my application kon si hai? Topic modeling. Bilkul. Which of the data we cannot perform cluster analysis? Time series ko kaise likhte because it's not very common. Time series is more about forecasting. Uh, Netflix movie recommendation system uses. I have no idea. Aap log dekhte Netflix. Subare hai mujhe pata aap log subare. Time zay karne wali baat hai na dekha kare. I think uh, it might might be using all three frankly. Like in primarily uh, could be supervised level. The final output of a hierarchy clustering is the tree. Okay. Which of the following is not required for K means? That was Jaldi Batayan. K means with KC's case. Come on. C. You need a distance metric, obviously. You need the initial order cluster. This is not what is required. Guess to kya wo khud calculate karega? Taking the average. Which of the following is wrong? K nearest neighbor is the classification approach, right? I think this is wrong. A is wrong. This is true. Approach the approach. So, what the approach to same and uh, ha, what the vector condition? What is it? Eh? No, 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 no vector. Give me a name. Vector quantization is something else. I don't think so. The K means is a vector quantization method. Eh? गलती तो आप लोग करेंगे ना एग्जाम में अच्छा मर्जिंग किस में हो रही है मर्ज मर्ज द क्लस्टर मर्ज द क्लस्टर हाइरार्किकल इफ यू मर्ज द डेटा पॉइंट्स फिर तो तीनों में हो रही है वो तो हां बस होने वाला है ऑप्टिमल नंबर ऑफ Clusters, how do you know K-means? Elbo method. Okay. When do you stop the K-means clustering algorithm? Yes, no new reassignment of points. Okay, that's the main point. Hey, I don't, I don't think so. If it's in the circuit, then it's okay. A and B. In this case, we won't cut your number in the answers. Just give the logical reason if I give MCQs. 
what is the top to bottom so top what is the agglomerative hai does not require a dendrogram a means uh, suppose of convergence at local optima ye wohi hai that means you will not be able to find out the id number of clusters takes each data point as an individual cluster i'm not able to understand i think this is the answer goes on making clusters until you decrease an optimal number of clusters i don't know nahi the optimal to fit to nahi hona chahiye na maybe it's the first one theek hai for topic modeling we should use i think all of them as a kv is theek hai but is a dendrogram chale ye to khair ab please listen carefully um it's time to give you the assignment theek hai uh you are supposed to download three data sets from uci machine learning repository and three data sets from kaggle regarding clustering they will not be requiring any data wrangling unke missing values wagaira nahi hongi theek hai so one of the data sets should be for the customer data sets yeah so let's take two two data sets let's make a total of four no data sets uci machine learning repository two data sets from kaggle download them and then you are supposed to uh implement each of the clustering algorithms while playing with the hyperparameters then write an interpretation report or a summary okay the data sets are of different types one of them should be the customer data set other one can be the credit card fraud data set ke outlier detection ke liye it's up to you because if i give you the data set then it's sort of a it becomes very static so i want to keep it dynamic apni marzi ka data set nikale sahi hai so therefore it should be diversity and then you are supposed to actually uh, determine ke kaun sa algorithm kis situation mein acha kaam kar raha hai so take all the standard ones db scan aur jo bhi humne aaj padhe hain wo sare le le ya jo teen main hain hierarchical uh, density based methods jisme mean shift bhi hai aur db scan bhi hai aur optics optics ko chhod dein aur hierarchical mein birds bhi hai aur agglomerative hai top down hai take one of them agglomerative or and the birds one or divisive or the birds one so i want you to i want you to actually go through the hands on activities and try to understand ke in which situations the density based methods are doing good in which situation the partition ones are doing good and in which situation the hierarchical ones are doing good try to see ke but how things are changing so you have you should have four different data sets from two different repositories and then implement your own code copy kar le abhishek but implement it on your own aur uske andar jo bhi aap jis tarike se bhi the more the better presentation you make the better marks marks you will get but i want the interpretation of the results in the end say okay this is how things are varying and this is how things are happening yes everything in the notebook everything in the notebook no no extra submission okay so this is very important to get the hands on really mai bata raha hu aapko so next uh, hourly stuff se starting